Hey, I'm Marcus. And I'm Nick. We are Working Class Nerds. Hear the intro. Right, we are Working Class Nerds, the podcast that gives you no information about your favorite information. Today is Thursday, January 27th, 2022, and you can find this 138 podcast on Apple Podcasts, Buzzsprout, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and anywhere you can find a po- podcast in the galaxy far, far away. You can watch me terribly fail at video games or fall off every single thing that I need to jump on in Destiny. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays at twitch.tv slash MarcusB814. You can also watch me play video games every single Monday night at twitch.tv slash NickVern51. And you can find the both of us on Twitter. I am at MarcusB814. And I am at Nick Vern. That's N-I-C-K-V-E-R-N. And in this week's episode, we're talking with the two most handsome <laughs> Destiny 2 <laughs> podcasters in the entire galaxy. That's right. We're talking with Gator and Hazel from the Guardian Down podcast. So welcome to the show, both of you, and what have you guys been up to? Hey, how's it going, guys? <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. Hey, I'm handsome enough for both of both of us. So Gator was looking around trying to find out who else was handsome. Yeah, I, he was like, looking at himself. He was looking at was himself. Was that it? Yeah. Is that what I was doing? Okay. Yes. okay. You were All looking right. at yourself. <laughs> uh, let's start with you, Hazel. What have you been up to? Oh, man. I am sore right now. Um I, uh, work was kind of slow today because we've been having system issues. So I've, um, took up doing yoga during my breaks and stuff and it is murdering myself because I usually I've, I've never really done yoga like consecutively Yeah. Okay. because usually it was just whenever my wife wanted to, because I was thinking maybe I could get some goodwill and you know, something else. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> we're familiar. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, now I'm doing it for myself, and it's uh, weird, and I'm sore as hell right now. I but like if, yoga a lot. As long as you're drinking a lot of water, you're going to feel amazing in a couple of days. Yeah. Lots and lots and lots of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've definitely been doing that. Um, so about the end of January, uh, or I'm sorry, the end of December, I mean, I woke up with shortness of breath at like 3 a.m., and I'm only Whoa. 40 years old. Okay. And for anybody who doesn't know what the hell that is, it's like when you can't breathe and you can't get enough air down to your lungs, mm. I panicked and I was like, holy shit. So, uh, yeah, that was the day that I decided to make a change and I'm like, all right, <laughs> time to, time to be Ta- more fit. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's awesome. So what have you been doing in game or games? Uh, ah, in games, um, pretty much I've only been playing destiny, uh, at the moment. So I've been doing GMs, so the Grandmaster Nightfalls, yep. um, with uh, a couple guys from uh, another Discord, another clan, and that kind of thing. So uh, we've been kind of running our head against a wall sometimes, but uh, it's always a good thing and really cathartic whenever you beat one and you're just like, you know, cheering and everything else, and especially when you're doing it during a podcast as well. Oh, you're playing during the Wait, podcast? Wait, you're playing during the podcast? <laughs> How is that even possible? Yeah. Like I could never concentrate on anything, let alone play a game while I podcast. I know you should. That's for exa- an art. If you don't believe them, listen to any of our live episodes <laughs> yes, where he gets true. distracted by the chat. <laughs> yeah, um, no, it's no, one no, of those no. things where I mean, we we did it enough, so it was the corrupted, which is pr- pretty much like what I found out. Hell like, on earth. Artist. Yeah. Yes. Hell exactly. on earth. Yep. Hell on exactly. earth. Exactly. And I found out that I actually played better during the podcast than I do on comms and everything else. So I wasn't wow. communicating with them at all. <laughs> I don't, I can't uh, do that. I don't know. I'm, I might have to call baloney on that. I don't know. Um, what do you, what do you, what do you think? Gator? I, I have to, I, it's official. It is. I did have it recorded. He actually celebrated getting a GM done while podcasting. I, wow. I was amazed. I was like, I can't, he even broke, broke script and was like, Oh my God! Yay! Yeah, I just I, finished a GM. I, I definitely did not say those words. Right. I, I, there was a I lot more profanity to it. Not, than that. Maybe so. Maybe. Let's 
fucking go. Yeah. yeah it was Let's like, go. Uh, yeah. Like it that. was for real like that. And it was like, get fucked and everything else. And yeah. yeah. I, uh, I find myself that I can't, I can't do two things at once. Mm -hmm. So if we're podcasting, yeah. we're podcasting. If I'm playing video games, I'm playing video games. If I'm streaming, most likely the games are lacking because I'm focusing on the chat. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm yeah. the same way. Yeah, I can see that. Um, and then last night we did a raid for our clan and um, uh, another guy from another clan helped us out because we needed, we were short one. So uh, we did that. We did Vogue and we did it twice in, I want to say like two and a half hours. So. Did you guys get, uh, anybody Vex? get the Vex? No, unfortunately not. Shocking. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a friend of ours, uh, Obi. It took him 42, I know, joking, 42, but it literally took him 42 times of running it to get the Vex. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, so, Gator, what have you been up to? I'm playing Destiny. I mean, what else is there to do? I mean, hello, I'm Gator, the uh, Destiny shill. Over there is Hazel. He's the Destiny realist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's kind of where we uh, we are. But, man, who who turned the temperatures down? It's freezing here in Florida, man. What Wait. is up with this cold weather? It was 50 three today can you what is uh, up with it uh, yeah, i'm number one hazel <laughs> yeah that's no. summer Wait, that's like summer to us Gator, can you can you uh see my my hand right here yeah. <laughs> i know it's okay this, this the a tiny smallest. violin going yeah. yes jesus uh, oh, I'm looking say, at my computer. Uh, no i saw i saw the red Sox hat i had to say that because i have i have buddies who live in boston and i i've seen pictures of them uh making an access out of their front door full just wall of snow i just can't imagine what that would look like but uh, well, I'm looking no, at yeah. the computer right now. It says 20 uh -huh. degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. OK. And it, that's it, the high for today. That's the, yeah, that's the high. <laughs> uh, it's 59. Uh, I, I this is a kind of a gag, but uh, we have a, a, a longtime friend of the show. He has his own podcast and stuff named Mr. Elmer Fudd. And I always have to give him a live weather report. So, Mr. Fudd, it's 59 degrees and clear skies tonight. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's I, I'm right now I'm prepping for Witch Queen. I don't know if you guys are into that stuff or not, but uh stacking bounties. Uh there's a website called destinyrecipes.com. Yep. If you go there, it gives you like a prep score, tells you what you need to do to click, you know, store glimmer and it's just it's awesome. It's my new game now is going to the site and see what my score is. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. For me, I find myself just like I set an achievement a few months ago that I wanted to hit 1330 before Witch Queen because like, <laughs> yeah, I like I just did. So last night we were going through and I got two. I needed three pieces of 1330. First two things we did. I got I got two of them. And of course, the last three things I do didn't give me the 1330 piece. But the thing that sucks about the game is unless you're going to do Vogue. You're not going to get any other option to get. Once you do your weekly stuff, you're stuck at that gear level until right. the next week. Hazel, um, do you want to tell them the news? <laughs> don't even try now. You don't, don't even bother. No, it's right a goal. Now. I have to. Oh, okay. Personal yeah, goal. Yeah, if it's a personal yeah, goal. It's a personal goal. Like I, have I, didn't know, I, I didn't know if you knew they were raising everyone to oh, yeah, 15, 50. Yeah, 1550 yeah. or whatever it is. 1560. Right. 13, well, no, that's, 13, the, that's the hard cap and pinnacle cap. But no, they're, the floor is going to be raised for everything to 1350. So it <laughs> No, I know that. Yeah, for Witch Queen. Yeah, right, yeah right, but right. my own personal goal is like before Witch Queen, because I've only been playing the game a few months. That's good. Like, I want to hit 1330 just to say that I did it before the expansion. And then, well, Nick will even say, like, when there's an expansion or a DLC, ooh, yeah, a DLC Stand for a game that you're playing, right? Like, you get so excited for it because of the anticipation of it coming. And for me, yeah. like, the Destiny expansion is my first expansion in the game. So it's going to be really awesome for me. Like, I played it at launch. But honestly, the thing that turned me off from the game originally was how you can run out of ammo. Um, yeah. that was the, that's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever experienced in a game, right? You have, you know, there's no reason why you have three, like that, you know? yeah, you have three types of guns and you can run out of all the ammo. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you just say three and hold up two fingers? No, I said three. I, I think you started with the peace. You probably didn't see them. You pro <laughs> I was probably like this, but I was holding the three. Um, <laughs> I'm going to shove these three fingers. In the <laughs> anyway. So what I'm saying is. Like for me now, it's I, I couldn't do it. And when I played the original story, the Red War with Gaul that I just showed you guys, yep. 
it was this room you went into in Nessus. And Nessus has to be the most beautiful area mm-hmm. for me, like the reds and the greens. Mm-hmm. But I went into this room and there was all like the electric um, water and there was all these raised platforms and the Vex came out at you. And I was stuck there for days because I just ran out of ammo and there was nothing I could do. And I went backwards to try to get ammo to go through and where the save checkpoint saved me. There was nothing I could do, nothing I could do. And I finally just was like, fuck this game. And then after I came back, they changed it to primary infinite. Mm -hmm. And that was probably the best quality of life thing they could have ever done for any video game. Like Bungie, like, smelled some smelling salts or maybe they fired the guy that decided that no prime no infinite ammo was a good thing because that is probably the best change ever in any game like ever like we like to affectionately uh say all the time bungie is the two steps forward one step back game well that's i think that's any mmo company so i'm also a star wars the old republic player Mm -hmm. and it's the same way with bioware I mean, we're in the content creator program with BioWare and Mm -hmm. it's, it's always, they make, they try something and then they scale it back and then they wait too long to fix it. And then they fix it better. It's, it's when you have a live service game, there's going to be flaws. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, But for me, like I see some flaws in destiny, but what I like about it is that it's just different. It's not a traditional MMO Mm -hmm. and there's so many players. So yeah. many people play that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about a what is it? A million a day? A million uh, concurrent? I know it's about three hundred thousand in Crucible, so it's probably double that in PVE. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, Nick, I know you have some big news. So why don't you tell us? Oh, I didn't even put that in my notes. What? How did you not? You're I moving forgot. to a fucking penthouse. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so it's like a. So I'm moving apartments. Uh, I know you guys don't really know this already, but I currently live with a roommate. Um, and my living situation is pretty awesome for, for that. But I got stumbled upon, courtesy of a family friend, um, Marcus's uh, family. Uh, family, yeah. That a, uh, a major upgrade, I'd be paying the same amount of money. Pretty close to. Yeah, pretty essentially. For instead of having a roommate, a two-bedroom apartment that's on the third floor of this house. That's like, but it. It's so high up, it makes you feel like it's like the penthouse suite. That's what he calls it. He calls it the penthouse. Yeah. It's a <laughs> two bedrooms, solid kitchen, solid dining room, solid living room. Um, and my, my goal, in my, I should backtrack a little bit. The whole motivation in like this, how, how things got kicked off. Um, I was complaining to Mark about working from home. Uh, I work in a drug research office and then uh, in the emergency department, like per diem to pick up extra hours. But I work most of the time I, I'd be working from home and where I work from home now is the same desk that like is in my room where my computer is for like gaming and stuff. So if I work from home and then game later, I'm like sitting in the same desk all day long and then go to bed like five feet from where I was just sitting. So that's obviously not ideal. So I was complaining and saying, hey, I'm going to move my set work from home setup into the living room or something so that I'm not in the same spot all day if I work from home. And Marks was like, well, if you just get a two bedroom apartment, that would be dope. I was like, yeah, but where am I going to find that's like the same situation as here? He was like, please hold. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, I have this. And then I went and looked at it and uh, I'm, I'm going to do it. So I think that's probably March 1st maybe uh is the, is the date but i'm looking forward to the the, the penthouse upgrade because one bedroom will be my actual bedroom the other one i'll just make in an office slash gaming room so i'll have two desks in there well you're gonna have your own space yeah and it's just me which is cool just you right which is the best and make sure it stays that way exactly <laughs> forever <laughs> congratulations you're, you're not married or anything nice. <laughs> yeah. thank you though yeah i'm pumped about it so that's coming down the pipeline it's gonna be a little stressful to move obviously because it's the third floor don't listen to him but we'll be fine. he's got all the chits in the world to for moving like he's helped me move so many times and of in, course in friend of the show joey fed i just helped him move uh, like whole ho- a whole house yeah so like he's got so. the people to help yeah. The shitty part is that I didn't think of be prior to asking him if he was interested in this place is that it's on the third floor. So right. guess what? That's going to suck. It's a lot moving. Of yeah. It's a lot of stairs and I'm, Ouch. I'm a big dude. 
and that shit's gonna suck. It'll be okay. Yeah, I feel like it's. Yeah. I feel like the heavy stuff is not even what's bad. It's what's gonna suck is just the number of times having to go up and down, and That's the it. boxes of bullshit. Right. Yeah. I had to move my daughter up three three stories. Yeah. For her apartment, it was not fun. Yeah. Same deal. The elevator broke. Oh no! Well, I don't even have an. El- this is a house, so it's not really. Oh, don't you option. don't have that option. Yeah. Wow. Rip that guy. Rip. Mm. Yeah. So Nick, have you been gaming? Well, I, I have. Know you did a little bit. Uh, I've been playing Halo, Halo Infinite specifically. Um, I've played, of course, the, the campaign content on stream Monday night, um, which is continuing to be pretty awesome. I'm I'm really enjoying the actual story missions now that I've stopped doing so much of the side content on stream. I've been a little bit off stream, which sure. is cool. Yeah. When you when I'm because the side missions definitely get repetitive. It's just go here, kill the covenant, and then press the button. But um, the the story missions are a lot more intriguing. I don't really, I mean, I understand, but I it's not kind of overly complicated. It's like the the uh, the banished, this sect of the covenant, are trying to activate this funky halo ring, um, and they've got. I don't know the under. There's a lot of mystery to like the the why part of it that I haven't got to yet. So right now it's a lot of just this one guy yelling about how he's gonna kill me <laughs> in hologram. But is it? Yeah, go here, kill this. This guy wants to kill you. Kill him. Move on to the next guy. Yeah, and he keeps sending stronger and stronger. Like it's almost like um, me. it's it's a hack and slash shooter. Pretty much. That's open what, world hack and slash. Yeah. Just hit A a bunch of times. Just keep shooting. And or X. If you run no, out of no. ammo, pick up the and B and Y. Why am I saying all this? Because the Xbox controller is the greatest controller ever created. Yeah, but I'm playing Throw on that PlayStation keyboard. 5 controller out of there, Gator. Sorry. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. I saw it in the camera and I had to call it out. <laughs> but Nick. I put it there for you. Yeah. Oh, nice. Perfect. Um, Nick, do you like not having Cortana. No. I think it's weird. Because you have, like, Cortana Light. You have another AI that's a blue lady. And it's the AI was supposed to, like, do something and then terminate. And she didn't get terminated for some weird reason. You don't really know why. Hey, lady. And it's, and it's basically because, like, Cortana's still around. The the sub, the sub bot the backstory is, like, Cortana is, like, screwed up and, like, malfunctioning. And she's helping the banished. But, like, the Covenant sect that you're fighting... But you don't really know what happened to her, or maybe I'm just like an idiot and don't really know the backstory for Halo. But um, something happened to Cortana. She's on that rings for some reason, and you have like Cortana Light, that's a different voice actress, helping you just like unlock doors and stuff. So yeah, it's weak. It's interesting. It's it's just different, you know. I feel like they took a, a linear campaign and stretched it out into the missions to make it this open world version, you know. Well, I think they're just trying to compete. You know, they're not just pulling the Call of Duties of the world, yeah, where they just, just throw it linear. Yeah, some stupid linear campaign and then just make it pretty and it. move on. I will say the multiplayer is very fun. I've been playing a lot of that also. Um, it's different. It's de- definitely different. Like I, I remember playing the original Halos, like that type of first-person shooter. Let's call it, that's like the Counter Strike style. We're not like aiming down the site. You're like. It's kind of like a third person over the shoulder zoom in unless you're using a sniper rifle. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just it's like you're always firing from the hip. Honestly, I right. do a lot of the times with even with a sniper rifle or like um the big gun is the the skewer. I like that too. That's oh. like a, a giant it shoots like metal rods and it's a one hit kill no matter where you hit somebody. You but. know what's really good? A lamb skewer. Yes. A good old, good old uh, falafel. Falafel. Um, anyway. But I, yeah, I end up just no scoping because it's it's a little easier than scoping in if they're close range, you know. Well, I think in that game the whole point is to not scope because then you can kill them faster. Right. But I'm I'm loving it. Are you doing ranked? Yes, I'm playing. I'm ranked gold six. I'm almost platinum, which is like exactly the middle. It sounds high up there, but actually, gold and platinum. Gold is like the left side of the bell curve, right in the middle. And then platinum is the right side of the bell curve. And diamond is the best of the best, right? Yeah. My roommate is in diamond. He's in diamond too. Paulo plays a lot of Halo. Wow. Yeah. He's like, he just got to diamond two, I think. Which is surprising to me that you don't play destiny because destiny is all the best parts of Halo 
Well, I didn't used to like Halo. Oh. This, remember, this changed my mind. I used to be oh, yeah. all Call of Duty all the time. Yes. And then I actually picked up Infinite's multiplayer because it's it was, it was free. free. Um, and then I, I was like, okay, like let me go into this with an open mind and not expect Call of Duty. And I'm like, okay, I realized finally, which was stupid to not realize earlier, but I realized like this is not supposed to be the same style. Because, you know, m- when I was younger... I liked Call of Duty first, so I always compared Halo directly to Call of Duty, expecting it to be like that hyper fast arcade shooter. Sure. And it's like, oh, this is stupid. It takes forever to kill people. And I'm not very good at it. So I just dismissed it and was like, eh, this is not for me, you know, and moved on. But now I'm like, okay, this is a totally different style. Like I understand and I'm having an absolute blast now. I feel like I'm making up for lost like Halo time, you know? Yes. Do you guys play Halo or any other games other than Destiny? Gator. I'm 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 from the uh I'm from Call of Duty. I played Call of Duty for a decade. Yeah. And uh switched over to Destiny. But I I played a little bit of Halo, Halo two probably. My son got me onto it from Xbox. Yeah. And uh I didn't like how you couldn't name down the site. Right. That was sure. all like a cursor shooter. I didn't it just didn't take for me. Yeah, I, I have. Um I uh, grew up on Halo and then went to Call of Duty after that. So, and I played Halo Infinite. Uh, I played the PvP stuff, and I was yeah. like, "It's okay." It, but it's just a drastic like time to kill difference between that and Destiny. I was yes. like, "These guys feel like it takes forever to kill them." Oh, definitely. Yeah, you have and, like it really rewards like headshots. I feel then then you really can right. reduce the uh, the time to kill. Mm-hmm. Like in in ranked. Oh, go, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to say that um, it was funny because I was actually playing, I played that and I also played the uh, the beta of Battlefield roughly at, like the same time. Oh, yep. yeah. So I was laughing because I was like, what the hell is with time to kill these days? Because it was longer on Battlefield to kill somebody <laughs> than it was on Halo, which is longer than it is on Destiny. And I'm just like, wow. Okay. I, I like being yeah. rewarded for, you know, killing people and not like wasting a whole am- like magazine of ammo meanwhile it called duty vanguard it's like two bullets for most guns it's way oh, cool. too yeah. fast in my opinion i hate it yeah. Van- i do it's not fast. like vanguard at all i liked uh cold war a lot um but i honestly if i was in the treyarch office or whoever's activision's office for in talking about call of duty i would say in two years or three years, come out with a game with a brand new engine and then release a new Call of Duty every three years and every year's season pass. The other one, just it just updates. And you can choose to keep the original file from the other the, the original campaign and all the shit and just upgrade the game because it's the same engine they've been using since 1996. Is it still it doesn't the Quake look, engine? Huh? I think, is it still the Quake engine? Yes. It's, Jeez. I, I, I mean... I'm sure they've upgraded, but the game still isn't, it's not beautiful. And I think it really shows in the Call of Duty Vanguard this year. It's not pretty. No, it doesn't look good. But I I mean, Modern Warfare 2019 looked great, I thought. And then Cold War does not look as good graphically because I think of the art style mainly. You know what I mean? But then those Treyarch games never did. The art (laughs) style for Black Ops is always like, not quite as realistic, you know what I mean. But the mm-hmm. but the Treyarch version of the game has always my been my favorite. Mine too. Yeah. Where Infinity War like was mechan- always the prettiest. Me- yeah, mechanics wise, I mean, yes. yeah, yeah. Treyarch is yeah. my favorite. But, See, I was um, the other way around. I liked yeah. Infinity War stuff more than Treyarch because didn't Treyarch do World at War? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, Treyarch, I hated that. Treyarch World by zombies of the game. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. I hated cool. that. I, not zombies, but um, just World, World at War, War and I well, swore I, off at that point. Like. Well, ew. Yeah, but when World at War, the first one, came, yeah, World at War came out, we were all tired of World War II shooters. There was mm-hmm. Medal of Honor, Battlefield. I mean, everything mm-hmm. was World War II and the Tommy gun. Yeah, you know what I mean? It, or the, Thompson. All, all it was of, a Thompson. All of the other Call of Duties. You know what I mean? Right. And then Modern Warfare. Changed it up. Changed it. Completely. I mean, yeah, yeah completely. And, and it's never been the same. But I just think with live service games like Destiny, SWOTOR, all the MMOs, like, A live service game, people want to invest time into a game. No longer is the time where you're buying, like, how many, I'm going to say going to GameStop, but, like, 
or going on Steam or whatever, and you're buying 10 games a year. You're not really anymore. You're buying, you know, a few and you're playing them longer. Yeah, I get what you're like, saying. Like, I felt for years, like, I didn't play any other game other than Star Wars The Old Republic because as soon as I played a different game, I felt like I was cheating on SWOTOR. And now it's the same thing. Like, now I'm splitting my two worlds with Destiny and, and SWOTOR, and it's fucking killing me because, <laughs> like, what? how do you balance it? And you can't. <laughs> right. What's I'm so sorry, funny, I'm not Gator? laughing at you. I'm no, not no. laughing at you because I was the other way around. I would play Destiny and people would try to get me to play another game. And there the whole time all I could think about is, man, I, I could be knocking this out at Destiny. I could be doing this tonight. Instead, I'm playing this stupid game. Yeah, I feel I, I feel you, man. I feel you. I'm a stupid pirate and stupid sea of thieves. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but for, that, yes. For cosmetic upgrades, and that's it. Yeah. That's I, why but, I laugh. So. Yeah, but it's the truth. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just when you get invested in a game, you just don't want, yep. you don't want to stop playing that game. Right. And it's, it's just one of those things, but for the record, I, I like Sea of Thieves. I'm just kidding, but well, no, Sea of Thieves <laughs> is great. It's not my style of game. No, me neither. But it's like but, yeah. to go in there one, t- like once, once or twice with your friends and go drive a pirate ship around and blow up somebody else's pirate ship and scream Arr! a few times with your buddies. You're going to have a great time. Of course. Right. Yeah. It, but it's for me like now, like, okay, I, I got to play games tonight. Do I want to play destiny or do I want to play star Wars? Oh shit. But don't forget. There's this other game coming out that I really want to play. Oh, I'm not going to fucking play it. Right. Or I'm going to play it twice and then never pick it up again. So I just stopped. Everybody talks about all these awesome games. Like I'd love to play the halo infinite campaign. There's not a chance in the world that I will do it. So I get to enjoy it through Nick's stream. Right. And that's you know? one of the things, too, is that um, so I've been a diehard PlayStation fanboy for years. And then when the next gen stuff came out, the only thing I could get was an Xbox Series X. So I was like, all right, well, hell, let me go ahead and, you know, I'll go this route. It's all the same in, in the end. Right. Except for one thing. Game Pass. Yes. Right. Holy hell. I've been Listen, like on yes. board with it and playing a ton more games than I ever played on PlayStation. Yeah. Um, Xbox I'm going to, I'm going to, so do you guys, I'm sure if you have social media, you've seen, have you guys seen the backbone controller? It, it plugs into an iPhone. Can you guys see that? Oh, boom. Yeah. Oh I, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I can play any game I want. That's mm-hmm. on Xbox game pass on mm-hmm. my phone with an mm-hmm. Xbox controller. So now, and it just cloud gaming. So I'll give you an example. Destiny runs like complete shit on it, even on Wi-Fi, right? You can't do anything like that. I mean, you can do some bounties with it and like the Cosmodrome or something. But like I played Minecraft Dungeons. Now we're all giggling about Minecraft Dungeons. It's basically Minecraft Diablo, right? Yeah. But I got to play it for a half an hour on my phone, plugged in, charging. And it was awesome. It was awesome. But now I have Game Pass on my Xbox and my PC. Here's the other thing. The Game Pass... All the new games are available day one if it's a yeah. Microsoft first party game. Like we can we don't have to go down the rabbit hole of the Activision uh Yeah, please don't. No, no, <laughs> no. That last no week. But, yeah, no, no. But what I'm saying is why is that controversial or something? Oh <laughs> yeah. I well I have a different I have I have a different take on all this. Well, I think well I see it as a business. As a business decision, Xbox is losing the console war. But acquiring Activision Blizzard, they have won the content war. And Sony started this content war because with really their yeah. with their exactly. exclusives in the last two generations. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with it because, like, if Sony owns a studio and it's Spider-Man and it's one of the greatest games ever. I love that game. Why not? See, this is my thought. Okay. Like, look at what Sony's finally doing. They're starting to lose money to PC players. So they're finally now the God of War is the highest selling game on Steam this month. Like, wake up, Sony. You know what I mean? And day one of Xbox games, it's real it, Xbox and P- PC, it's available day one. Mm-hmm. But like Hazel was saying, the game pass, that's gonna change the game. Oh, like yeah. you, you can pay 15 bucks. Now, here's a crazy thing: whether you're a World of Warcraft player or not, right? Mm-hmm. And whatever drama's going on with that studio think about this 
you pay 15 bucks a month for a wow subscription what if they put wow on a console and they say your wow subscription is only five bucks a month with your game pass now you get all those games with it it's crazy to me it's a no brainer yeah yeah like nick i uh, but like Nick, uh, what's the game uh, that's coming out? Uh, for as in Forbidden West. Forbidden West. Nick's getting that, but that's a PlayStation exclusive. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're stuck. Right. I have to. Thankfully, they're making it for PS4 also, which kind of bails me out. So I don't have to go find a P PlayStation 5. But yeah, my first big stream game was Horizon Zero Dawn because it got ported to PC. So I played that and that was awesome. But it's a fun game. Yeah. But now to play Forbidden West, I need a PS5. That I can't get, which is annoying. Well, and you know, so the guy at the local GameStop, because I bought Just Dance 2021 for the kids, mm -hmm. and sure. just seeing me dancing is ridiculous. But the, for the kids is right. Thank you, Hazel, for the quotation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mark, it was for the kids. But anyway, Marcus loves his I, rescue team. Okay? I yeah. Oh no, I don't know what song it was, but I fucking loved it. I must have did it like three times. My daughter was just sitting there hysteric, hysterically laughing. And here's my wife. She pulls out her phone and I gave her the look like this. Just remember when you dance, I'm going to do the same thing you're about to do. And she slowly <laughs> put her phone back in her pocket. And I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the difference between me recording and you, I'm going to post that shit to the discord. <laughs> say, look at my wife dancing with my kids. You know what I mean? Yes. But anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I asked about the PlayStation, and the guy said that his PlayStation rep said there's plenty of PlayStations. They're just doing a Nintendo. That's all it is. The PlayStation 5 demand is forced by Sony just to create demand for the system like they did with the Switch and the Wii and all that stuff with Nintendo. And then all of a sudden, they're just going to release a shit ton of them. They're going to be everywhere. Huh. But like all the local stores now, if you want a PlayStation 5, the only way you can get it is on ship day. You have to buy the $750 bundle that comes with two games, a controller and a charger in order to be able to buy one. Wow. Yep. They won't just sell you the system because the, the GameStop isn't making, or any local store isn't making any money on the console. They make it on all the extras. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind buying the bundle per se, if I had rather than pay, you know, basically 700 off of a, uh, one of those sites anyways, yeah. you know, at least yeah. you're getting stuff for the extra money. Yes. But anyway, oh, also, do you guys watch Book of Boba Fett or any? Star you guys Star Wars? Wars oh, oh yeah. Okay, oh, Hazel, yeah. you too. Um, I started it like I think yesterday, so I'm like I'm, I'm in. I finished episode three, and I'm just sort of like about to pull the cord on the on the show. No, no, like no. it's you gotta you skip three. It's just you skip trash. three. You but have to just forget about three. Episode three is terrible. Episode, it is. Episode two is solid. Episode four is Ep very solid. Oh, episode yeah. five is great. Really. Yes. All right. yes. You've seen The Mandalorian, right? Of course, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, season one and two? Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I won't spoil yeah. anything, but Well, yeah. no, you can. I mean, it's okay, but I mean, I'm just, I don't, I was like, I was in our Discord and I mentioned it. I was like, what the hell is with that low-speed chase? Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> that was like, that was terrible. I, I, like, I thought it was yeah. Blue's Clues. <laughs> exactly. Um, I, like, it was bad enough, the, the design on the literal scooters that these people yeah. are, are okay. driving. Yeah. And then they, they do the whole scene at 12 miles an hour. Well, <laughs> I'm going to no just say one this. Cares. Do you know what they were? Do you guys ever see the movie Back to the Future 2? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sure. The, yes. the scooter crew was Biff's crew on the hoverboards. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. 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 Except you know, their hair didn't move in, the, in, the, in this. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. in Book of Boba Fett, their hair didn't move, their clothes didn't move. I was just like, "This is just terrible." It, it was, was pretty bad. That was yeah. terrible. Yeah. I, I literally had an audible laugh when I saw it the first time. Yeah, I was like, "Well, this would might be this is a terrible setup to begin with because I don't care about any of those people in that chase." But then yeah. uh, they also did it at like literally fifteen miles an hour. It's called stretching the content. It's if you're listening to a podcast and you put it on like 0.5 speed. So, you know, we're doing the podcast live instead of at normal speed. Yeah, that's what it felt like. Yes, it did. So you're but saying anyway. you need to watch it again. Just fast forward. Oh, so, so I mean, I, I think I would just fast forward so fast that I go right past that scene. <laughs> that might be yeah. winning right there. 
Yeah. Well, no, because yeah. then you gotta then you have to you have to watch him crash into the cart where all the like fruit falls on him because it's meant to be the poop from Biff. Because there's a a sh- like I don't know who the director is for the show, but it's definitely a lot of ties back to Back to the Future. And well, that yeah, it's wasn't it Robert director. Rodriguez? Yeah, it was Robert Rodriguez. Robert Rodriguez. That, that episode yeah. was Robert Rodriguez. Yeah. 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 Episode yeah. episode five inside. was uh was yeah. Bryce Ooh. Dallas Howard. How- oh, How- oh, nice. Bryce Dallas. Yeah, that's uh yeah. Yeah. She that's uh Howard's daughter. Yes, she crushed it for that episode. Episode yeah. I'm telling you, episode four Very is good. much better. Obviously, episode three is like the toilet bowl of Star Wars content. <laughs> two was, was good too. Two was two was, okay. two was yeah. Two to Marcus says at the time was saying two was like his be- favorite Star Wars content ever. Yeah. Yeah. It was the most natural Star Wars episode, like the best Star Wars we've seen since the Clone Wars for me. Yeah. Because the Bad Batch is just the worst show ever made. Oh, like that we could have done without that show. Yeah, I did not like it. Like they could have just they should have just done a venture show and stretched a whole season about <laughs> ventures killing people and it would have been a million yeah. times better than the Bad Batch. Like nobody uh, yeah. cares. Yeah, yeah. Or mm-hmm. they should have just done a movie of the Bad Batch and called it a day. You know what I mean? I don't know. Well, or just yeah. nothing I, happened in the Bad Batch. I'm just ready to move on from the original movies. Like that's why I love the High Republic stuff. Like I finished the latest book. And it's amazing. Like they need to produce the High Republic content on shows, and forget about Skywalker's, forget about Boba Fett, yeah. forget about Luke and his green saber and CGI and I mean, all that stuff. Move on. My favorite characters have been newly created. Like Din Djarin, the Mandalorian, is my favorite character so far in like the Star Wars that since I can remember. Mm-hmm. This at least it's the most engaging. Like I don't know the. Yeah, of the what new a, characters. What about probably? Ray? Just kidding. Just no, kidding. no, I, the, <laughs> definitely like di, like anything from the Mandalorian better than uh, like that sequel trilogy for yeah. sure. No way. Ray is the shit. You just <laughs> say that because your daughter likes Ray. Yes, and we have her fucking <laughs> lightsaber. Like <laughs> that she's amazing. Where is that? You got to put that on a shelf. It's in all here coming, dude. When the studio's done, Nick, it's gonna all be in here. And I'm hoping when I flip the lights, the the lightsabers turn on. I'm trying to figure out how to keep it plugged in nice. so when the lights turn on, the sabers light up. You just put it on the back of the door, like standing vertically. Yes. Oh, I have all plans. That'd be cool. Yes. That would be. When, I, when I swap apartments, I'll have the dark. I have the dark saber, courtesy of Marcus, by the way. Nice. Uh, really? The Black Series one, which is. Really? Epic. Yes. Yeah. Well, Nick, the year before, we were only supposed to spend like 25 bucks on Christmas, and he shows up with a Ventress lightsaber. So my Black favorite Star Wars character is R2-D2. But my second favorite is Ventress in every way. And he got, got me her lightsaber. The Black Series. I like, immediately like opened it and just started beating my kids with it. It was hilarious. And then we went to Galaxy's <laughs> Edge and I got them both disclaimer, lightsabers. Disclaimer, he didn't actually beat his shoulder. Well, no, kidding. disclaimer. Yeah, I'm not an <laughs> asshole. But I did whoop their ass with it, no doubt. But the... Uh, he won the duel. Yeah, I won the duel. That's right. But as soon as they came home with the new light, their own lightsabers, they beat the shit out of me with those things daily. They turn him on and say, where's your saber, dad? I don't know. Bam. <laughs> See you later, Shins. Yes. Oh, no. They fucking whack me in the head and the back. They're not Ooh. dumb. They don't need the shins anymore. They know where to hit dad where it hurts. <laughs> That's great. You know? Um, so if you haven't seen Book of Boba Fett episode five, definitely keep going. Hazel, you especially. Episode three is a travesty of Star Wars <laughs> content. The rest of it's good. Very good, though. Episode five in particular is my favorite. 100%. Oh. He, he's going to love it. Yes, yes. He doesn't know, but he's going to really See, love it. See, it wasn't my favorite because the show is called The Book of Boba Fett, not yes. Yes. insert name here. Yes, I yeah. know. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, now, I, I've heard that. I read that in our Discord that the why is the best episode of this show not including the main character? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. But still. Yes. Because yeah, there's only good. one more episode, right? Two more. Seven. I, I thought there was there was seven, not oh, not uh, six. I thought there were six yeah. too. When I, I was like, man, they're gonna do this and then the finale, but um, I no, there's two more, so it's fine. So it's probably gonna be, honestly, we might get more content like that and then the finale. Where, uh, but anyways, back at the ranch. Uh, I don't want to dwell on this too much because I'm gonna end up spoiling stuff. Uh, last thing for me, I played paintball again this past weekend. Uh, I'm on. Uh, what are you shaking your head at? It's fucking winter. So what? It's the off season. <laughs> We had a get together. So uh, I play competitive paintball. I am uh, a coach for one team and a player on another in an organization called Chris Ward Electric Power. 
CWE Power. It's a big organization for paintball uh, in New England. And we had practice this weekend on the Frozen Tundra, which was awesome, but it was still great. We scrimmaged a team that came from um, the Midwest somewhere. Um, Ivan Gonzalez coaches them. He's a pro player for Sacramento DMG. And they flew in to scrimmage us, and we did very well against them. That was very satisfying on the Arctic Tundra. But it's because they were freezing. Well, so were we. <laughs> Nobody wants to play paintball when it's six Man. outside. Yeah, it was rough. But but the pits were warm. We had like the the mega like space eaters. They're like yeah. jet turbines. Yes, they're probably those fumes probably aren't good to breathe. No, the kerosene. But... Ooh, that's delicious. <laughs> but it was fun and exciting, and I can't. I, it's we're obviously not playing it this weekend because we're getting snowmageddon. But um, but yeah, things are great. So anyways, Marcus, how's it going and what have you been up to? Holy cow. So last night was amazing. So last night I streamed. Um, I was going to stream SWOTOR, but I ended up streaming Destiny 2 because I'm on a mission to get to 1330 before the expansion. Personal goal. I know it doesn't matter because it doesn't mean shit, but that's the only thing there is for me to do. Because before the expansion, I want to do a GM Nightfall. I did my first master version of it. That went great. It was fun. But last night in stream, somebody came into the chat and was like, hey, dude, how's it going? I was like, hey, and shared some uh, bits, like 10 bits. And I was just like, what are you doing? You just need to say hi. Anyways, he's like, can I join you? And I gave him the one rule. What's our one rule, Nick? Don't be a douchebag. That's it. You follow that rule. You're welcome with us anytime. Right. So we uh, he came. His name was Cauterized Toast. He said burnt toast wasn't available, so he chose cauterized. I'm I like, mean, that's a pretty fun alternative. Yes, exactly. But he yeah. played with us all night. So from like 8 15 p.m. Eastern until 11 30, he played with us. That's cool. Like, it was awesome. So we did all the weekly stuff. I needed three pieces of 13 30. I got two, and then Destiny stuck it in my ass. But that's fine. R and Jesus was not in your corner. No, he never. Well, it, no, it's Bungie Jesus because Bungie does that shit on purpose. There should be a vendor that you can go to and like it can should be ridiculously high cost of materials. But you should if you need one more piece of gear and like you shouldn't be able to use that kiosk if you need to. But if you need one more piece of gear to upgrade to that next tier, you should be able to go to that vendor and say, click this. It costs you a lot of stuff, but now you're 1330 and you're done. Yeah. Yeah, but Bungie doesn't care about that. <laughs> Anyways, um, no, they don't. No, of course. Not. No, they just care about you. Well, the reason why they do this weekly reset and all that stuff and only allow you to do so many things to get it is to keep you playing the game. Mm -hmm. If Good they way. allowed you to continue to get max level gear or like upgrades all week, people would be max level in, you know, yeah. four days, yeah. not, you know, longer, 14 yeah. weeks. So anyway, um. I had a shit ton of fun. I'm really enjoying it. I'm a super graphical whore. I love pretty graphics. And that game is beautiful. I can't tell you enough. I'll be running somewhere and I'll stop and look at the water in the stream. Just whoosh, whoosh, and I'll just stop there and stare. And like my, my friends will be like, where are you staring at the water? <laughs> are you going to come kill stuff? It doesn't really matter. You guys are killing everything. I can just watch, <laughs> you know, I would say that's the hardest part is playing with people who have played destiny since D one. Like they know this shit so well they'll go in and like, I get the Gallahorn rocket launcher. And before I can even shoot a shot, they've already killed the boss because one's using a fucking Nova bomb. And another one's using something else in a yeah. well and this, and I don't even know what the fuck these things do. They just tell me, Marcus go to the purple thing Take the middle tree. What the fuck is the tree? They said that just there's three options. Top, middle, bottom. Pick the middle one. And when I tell you to hold the hold your special button, hold it to drop a bubble. Okay. Marcus, push the bubble. Okay. What are we doing? You're keeping us alive. What else am I supposed to be doing? Shooting the boss. Oh, you didn't tell me that. Okay, moving on. You know what I mean? Um, But this week was uh, actually it was Saturday. So I've never done a legendary lost sector by myself. Like nice. I've only played with got people mm -hmm. and I've never tried to play really solo, like PVP solo or something. Like I'm always with friends. I'm a social person in game. 
like Nick is a single player RPG player. Like he doesn't want the MMO. He yeah. wants the single player online game. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Skyrim, I, Elder Scrolls. Me, I, I want people out. like, yo, you want to come in the nerds community discord? Join our discord. Come play. And I'm serious. And Nick's like, I'll be just in my corner watching all of you guys playing together, but I'm going to be over here. Yeah. That, yeah. I'll, I'll talk about the cool quest I did later. Yes, exactly. But... Unless we're playing a shooter. Yeah. A shooter. I want to play with everybody. Right. Yeah. So, um, I did my first legendary lost sector, but I grinded it all night to get Oh shit. Curious, curious of the falling star. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a Titan. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Of course I'm a Titan. I'm, Six two, two hundred and seventy pounds. You're more than two seventy. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't weighed myself in a while. I am two sixty. Then maybe I'm two eighty. <laughs> You're know, more than twenty pounds more than me. I don't know. I, I'll weigh myself. I honestly don't, I don't know. I, don't I know I'm tense, but there's no way you're only ten pounds more than me. I don't know. I don't have a scale. I don't either. Anyways, moving on. Back at the ranch. Yeah. Um, so my point is, is so I wanted to get this item. So my first run, I killed the boss, but I did, and I only had, I had no lives left. I didn't know you didn't have to clear the room. Yes. Oh. So Every, I went to go clear, <laughs> kill the, face. I went to go kill the overlord, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And he killed me and I didn't get the loot. Oh, rip that guy. Rip. That so guy. then I went back and did it and I got an exotic, but of course they didn't give me the one I wanted. It just kept giving me so, but it ended up not being bad because every other one I got an exotic. So it was nice. one. No, the next one was next one. No, the next one. Yes. So I ended up streaming for like three and a half hours, but I ended up getting it. It was my fourth exotic, but I got it. It was awesome. Chris. Yes. And it's the it, one to get, but it's the one that gives you more power when you do the, the Superman dive, right? Yeah. The thunder yeah. crash. Thunder crash. Yeah, that, yeah. That's what I put on my Titan all the time. I love it. For right. DPS. It's awesome. Right. Um, for me now, what was interesting for me is it's a new way to play a first person shooter. As Nick knows, I am, I live by the motto pray and spray. Yeah. Like in my warfare too, Marcus was the, uh, some machine gun run as fast as you can die as much as you can. As long as I'm taking you out with me, that's how I play games. Right. And doing doing these you have to be a little more methodical yeah and that's not my style and i learned that quick doing the master um nightfall as well and i know it's not a gm but i've never done a gm they're tough yeah yeah i mean they are but they're they're, they're doable i yeah. mean if you have a team and knows what they're doing yeah. Well, that's, I say it all the time. I'm carried so much because I'm playing with players. Like, okay, I'll give examples. Everybody, my season rank is like 152. Everybody I play with is like 250 and up. One of them, I think, is like at 600. Like, <laughs> we I, got like, guys over a thousand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's what I mean. But like, yeah. those guys are seasoned players. Those, oh, right. those guys are that are going into the GMs and being like, this is easy. Nah, they're still, I mean, they're still hard, even at a thousand. I mean, I'm not there. I'm at like 250, 260, something like that. But so you're a yeah, pro. I'm at, I'm at uh, 450. <laughs> What's well, because you're a bounty whore? Well, now keep in mind, Marcus, this is a double season. This season went twice as long as a normal season. So everyone's going to be 200 and up this, this time of year because we're toward the end of the season. You seasons are what, Hazel? About three months, usually about 90 days? Yeah, about three months. Yeah. How long is the Call of Duty one, Nick? Uh, it's like 80 days. days. Yeah, in that ballpark. Something yeah. like that, yeah. Yeah. It's well, less than uh, it's well, Destiny. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think it's maybe 60 days. Let's see. Hazel, it when did uh, Season of the Lost start? You remember? Oh, shit. Was it uh, fall? August. Was it fall? In no. August? No, it wasn't August. September? Yeah, I think it was September. Uh, because. October, November, uh, December, January, February. Yeah, five months. Yeah, it was a long one. And I remember them yeah. saying that. And well, either way, it's been yeah. really fun. Um, yeah. in Star Swotor, I've been playing uh, a lot of PvP. I find that to be the most fun I'm having in the game right now. But in the content lull, waiting for the expansion to come out, I feel like I'm not really invigorated to play the game. 
because it's not new to me because I've been playing the game for seven years. You know what I mean? So it's like the same old, same old. Mm -hmm. Just like, and I'm sure if I was playing Destiny for seven years, I would feel the same way. You're like, I don't really want to keep doing this over and over. Let me play a different game. Um, but I'm really uh, looking forward to, um, you know, both expansions coming up. And my office update, it's all the frames are done. Everything is in frames. Actually, I have one piece of art that is on the way. Um, they didn't have, I couldn't find a real print of Deep Stone Crypt. So, um, guys, I'm kind of bougie when it comes to this stuff. Like, all the art you see in the, behind me is real, like, like uh, authentic Star Wars art made by artists, painted, whatever, prints, all numbered. I don't buy anything that's just, like, a poster, right? right. Yeah. Right. So, I found... Um, some destiny art and I got actually one. So I really wanted deep stone crypt. Cause that was the first raid that we did. And that was like, we put a group of people together and a bunch of people never did it. Like we actually progged it. And what I mean by progged, we progressed it. Like we did it every Monday for two or three hours. And you know, we didn't clear it in the first nights. That's awesome. You know what I mean? Like we got to a tracks and we wiped a shit ton. Because two of the players are, I think three of the players really knew what they were doing. And the other three were new to the destiny rating and the mechanics are the same as like a traditional MMO, but like we earned that win. Like mm -hmm. when we beat that raid, it felt really good, but come to find out in the destiny community, that's not their raid community. It's like, if you're signing in to do a raid, you're not stopping until that raid is over. Pretty much. Unless she, unless like the team, it's not going to happen. And then just people are like, all right, we're calling it after three hours or whatever. But it's not yeah, the we... same. It's not the same for us in the MMO world, like the SWOTOR community. Like we have raid teams that we raid with the same group of eight people every week, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, 8.30 to 10.30 PM. Mm -hmm. And we work through these bosses. It's not like that with Destiny. I wish it would be though, because I think that would be amazing. I think the community would probably fucking revolt, but I mean, I would love to see that where you're like, maybe like they have the power where it's set so high that you have to do the raid to get the drop. And then you can like, you have to get so many drops in order to do the next part of the raid. I think that would be fantastic. That's basically the way traditional MMO. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but you know, we do it and, we kind of we love it anyways so we're almost there star wars news finally oh yes finally yes yes finally yes, yes, we yes. got a real update for star wars news um what did we find out nick so we found out that respawn uh the the makers or i should say game developers of titanfall of apex legends and of star wars jedi fallen order will be Developing three or so producing two and developing one, uh, sorry, no, developing two and producing one new Star Wars game. So they're developing a star, uh, Jedi star. It, the, the name of the series, let me let me say this a little better. I'm trying to think up 17 thoughts at the same time. Jedi Fallen Order 2. Yeah, well, so <laughs> they call the series Star Wars Jedi something. So they're saying the sequel to Jedi Fallen Order is coming out. That's an you know. Uh, single player action RPG, basically, and it was amazing. It, yeah, it was. Jedi Fallen Order yes. was great. Oh, you guys play? Did you guys both play it? I just picked it up. Oh, be. it's great. If you, I love it, Gator. He's, after he's you're done with it, it, he's not gonna. He's not going. Oh, come on, man. It's a drinking you know, game in our in our podcast <sighs> where he says he'll get he's gonna play a game. How's yeah, Returnal going? Well, how much do you like Star Wars? I love Star Wars. Then you're gonna like. Trust me, I'm you. Okay, we're the same person. Play the game. Get <laughs> off of Zepho. Just get off of Zepho. The That's first all, planet. The, the first planet. Just get, get off, off Zepho. Get off the first planet. And you'll be hooked. You'll and play know it. this. <laughs> you have you have two weeks until uh, the Witch Queen comes out. You don't need to stockpile anything because everything you're stockpiling is going to mean nothing. Because you're going to prepare for everything, and then they're going to come out with the recipes. And everything you have, they're going to just. It's just going to be gone. Do you see what I have to put up with? <laughs> yes, but the reason why I'm saying this is the content in Fallen Order 
if you're a Star Wars fan, like yeah. something that happened in Book of Boba Fett this week had a direct tie in to, to Fallen, Fallen Order. Order. Like really, yes. that like I'm a gamer. I, I could like TV shows and movies cool. When they tie in a video game moment, my heart sunk and I was like, this is the best episode of Star Wars ever. Yep. All right. Because they finally connected it. And the way that game makes you feel, it's a linear game, but it allows you to explore. And so many times I would be looking at my map going, I got to go this way. But then you go the back way. And you find some wicked cool shit. And you're like, oh, and my then God. You, yeah. And like, I'll, I'll spoil a little bit. When you're sliding down the ice, you're going to say, because if you're a graphical whore like me, you're going to be sliding down the ice and you're going to say, Holy shit, this game is beautiful. Yeah, how many times did you die because you didn't? Oh my god. When <laughs> well, when I was streaming Fallen Order, yeah. they were they were had a they had a fall counter going <laughs> because I would fall so much. It was awesome. <laughs> That's great. But please, Fallen Order is amazing. Yes, please just play the game. It's not the campaign is what? 30 hours? Uh, I think if you just do just storm through it, it's probably less. Yeah, I didn't do any of the side quests. If you if you if you like explore, you know, 80% or more of every single planet because each level is essentially a planet, but you don't have to do everything there. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. You can, it's less, but probably about 30 hours to fucking okay. get like a fulfilling play for, through. You know what I mean? I wish That's I cool. could, I wish I could, uh, access your steam account and I would remove <laughs> destiny and it, it would only unlock on December, uh, February 14th. Uh, give him the 13th <laughs> so he can pre download it. Or yes. What? <laughs> That's <laughs> blasphemy. Yeah. Cause I know, I know you, and I don't even know you, but I know you're because I drill like down. Me. Yeah, I drill down on games. Yes, and you're not going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm actually. I, I picked it up. It was. Uh, it was actually. It was. I think it was with PlayStation Plus. It was free on. Yes, PS5. it was. Yes, it was. Yeah. That's why I yeah. picked it up. I was like, I, I've been, I've been waiting for it to go on sale on Steam for a long time. Yeah. Call them out. And then when I saw it for free, I was like, I'm going to at least download this sucker. <laughs> see, you proved it right Every, there. See, see, everybody takes a drink because I'll say, "All right, I'll play it," and they'll say, "Did you get past the title screen?" I'm like, "No, it was pretty. The title screen was real pretty." <laughs> so I'll tell you how you and Marcus are the same, real quick. I know we've said this before. <laughs> Marcus, until probably recently, maybe like the past two years or don't year, go year there. Half. No, we're not going there. Yes, I am. No, Marcus is Mister <laughs> Strategy Guide. So Ooh. Marcus probably has about 30 to 40 strategy guides for games he's never played or played less than two hours. So Marcus knows, especially since he's been playing Star Wars Wheel of the Public. But, oh, there it is. The Grand Theft Auto Vice City strategy guide. Um, <laughs> Marcus has been, um, he's been playing Star Wars Wheel of the Public and has struggled to play other games because of, you know, being stuck with, uh, not stuck, but like, playing Star Wars Wheel of the Public. So in order to quote unquote motivate himself to play the new game that he's he had he buys, he'll buy the strategy guide too. Okay, this was an extra 30 bucks. Whatever, mm -hmm. there's no excuse. It's got cool art in it. Like I'm gonna get involved in this game. And two hours of playtime later in Red Dead Redemption 2 <laughs> nothing. It's because so the MMO hook yeah <laughs> is it the game never ends. Yes. Okay. My favorite game, and and it's come to fruition after 135 podcasts. Yeah. Like C Castlevania Blood, uh, Symphony, Symphony of the Night, Night is my favorite game. Yeah. But my real favorite game of all time is Mass Effect Two. Yeah. Mm. But the thing is about it is when it ended, I was upset. I didn't play games for like two weeks because I was like, "The fuck do I do now?" Right. I just invested 50 hours into this game, and this game was amazing. Yeah. I'm not going to play it again because I know how it ends. Like, I ended up playing it a couple more times over the years. Yeah, to, like, get the different endings. Yes, characters. but, yeah, like, yeah. at the end of the day, that's the thing about an MMO or Destiny's MMO or yeah. whatever is there's always something to do. It's right. an investment game. Yes. That's it, why I, I, I'm leery about moving away to another game. I don't want to get sucked down and not play Destiny. Well, See, that's a now, different... Now, now, this Star Wars game you're talking about, it's a story-based game. So once I'm done with the story, I'm done, right? You're done. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Never pick it up again. That That's easier to do for me. <laughs> yeah, especially... Hazel I mean, still says I'm not going to play it, but... He's not. No, he's not. Well, we're going to follow <laughs> up. I'm going to call him straight out on Twitter. <laughs> at Guardian Downcast. What planet are you on? Right. What, no. color, what color is BD1? <laughs> right. 
Exactly. <laughs> Who's BD1? What poncho, Get the fuck out of here. What poncho are you wearing? <laughs> yeah, what yeah. poncho color? <laughs> if it's not pink, you failed. Right. Did you go okay. to the red? What's the name of the red planet? Uh, I haven't played it. Hey, look how uh, red. Look at how red Gator's face is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you see? This call me out on Twitter. With. See, this is what I have to put up with. It's like, come on. There's all kinds of really good games out there, but uh, yeah, I am. I'm uh, in your position, Hazel. Yeah, so you are like Nick. <laughs> yeah. I am Gator, and I understand it. But it took me like, when did uh, Fallen Order come out? Like three years ago. Yeah. I didn't play it until like a year ago. I just mm-hmm. stopped and did it. Because I love Star Wars. I'm like, dude, you need to play this. And that, w- end, that would be enough. The, the last mission, all of the, whatever, whatever you do in gaming, if you want the best final <laughs> planet of any game you've ever played, it's this one. Yeah. That okay. Cool. Fan fucking tastic. Like unbelievable. Like I want uh, blown I wanna, away. I, I want to talk to you about it. I want to yes. play right right now. Yes, no, just the that. last mission. But anyway, so wait, 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 wait. don't don't spoil it. But what's on this planet? I not, water. I don't, don't want to tell you anything. Yeah. Okay. Oh, is it that planet? Really? Yes. Oh, I yeah, don't think you, it, so. I don't think a, it's the planet you're thinking. No, of. it's not. But shh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay. But like, just the stuff that that the little stuff that they put into it, and the way, yeah. just the way the guy moves and like he talks and like the places you go. And the things you get to do and, like, the emotions that you feel. Like, I legit got teary-eyed at one point okay. at the beginning of the game because I felt for this fucking dude. And I was just like, oh, my God. Yeah. I can't even imagine how I would feel. But anyways, to the first-person shooter game. Oh, yeah. So let me backtrack a little bit. <laughs> so we got the sequel to that awesome game we are just talking about. Meanwhile, 25 back. minutes later. <laughs> right. Uh, we... Respawn's also making a first-person shooter for Star Wars. And, you know, just a quick reminder, they made the Titanfall and they made Apex Legends. So they know how to do a a solid shooter. Um, And they're also going to be producing a Star Wars strategy game. Um, The production company is a, I think, a new production company. If I had to guess, if I had to guess the strategy game is going to be a mobile game. Yeah, probably. Like that. What's that that mobile strategy game um, that you saw all the commercials for? Oh shit! Clash of Clans. Yes, something like that, or something like that. That honestly, because the mobile games are the ones that make all the money. Yeah, that's probably true. You know what I mean? Um, in, in my opinion. But either way, I'm trying the, to find the name. The, well, the yeah, the first-person shooter I think is cool because like Battlefront Two was really successful. If they didn't put those fucking loot boxes in it and destroy the launch, right. that game would be the biggest shooting game there is still today and what the modders have done with it it's amazing um but i'm excited for three new games we are still waiting for ubisoft's uh announcement of their star oh, wars yeah. game yep which my tinfoil hat guess is it's going to be the division but star wars because it's the same team who created the division is building this game yep. so i'm guessing it's going to be <laughs> Okay, tinfoil hat. It's going to be, you're going to be a bounty hunter and you're going to be on the planets and you're going to be collecting bounties. And it's basically going to be division. You had me at bounties. <laughs> but you're never going to play it because you can't <laughs> double jump. <laughs> well, maybe you can double jump with a jetpack if you play a Mandalorian character. I'm going to, can I ask a question? Let me do, guess. Do, you do, play do, a warlock. Do, 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 do. I play all three. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Yeah, but but I, I, I main a warlock. <laughs> I <can't see> oh! <laughs> There it is. Uh, he's like, he's like, after the show, he's gonna be like, Hazel, how does this Marcus guy know me? Like <laughs> this guy is. Wait a minute. Whoa, that's some really cool. Hazel idea. got that for me one Christmas. Oh, that's sweet. Wow. Yeah. 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 All right. Anyways, I like, I like how that's um, framed with like the glass all the way through so, on the edges. Nick Valve finally decided to drop some news. Oh yeah. Uh. Valve is finally releasing their stream deck in, uh, crap, I forgot the date. Is February 25th. February 25th, 2022. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically like a switch, a switch PC. style, like, but PC and it, you can, you can stream or sorry, you can play any game on your steam account through like cloud gaming. Have you guys seen this thing? The yeah, link oh, yeah. is in the show yeah. notes. Yep. I'm telling you like, like I've been using the the cloud gaming on my phone once in a while, and 
I'm going to tell you what. The stream deck is really interesting for me because, like, I I like to do things, and I'm constantly bringing my laptop everywhere, a corded mouse, yeah. headset, you know, battery pack, all that shit. It would be nice to be able to play something that, like, is comfortable to play, but, like, I don't have to bring a all whole backpack yeah. full of shit. All the accessories. All the yeah. accessories just so I can play Destiny or Star Wars or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is cool for me. I mean, my preferred game type is lends itself a lot more easily to like a, something you can bring with you. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, like a, an, a, an action RPG, but I'm just thinking like playing fallout four on the beach or something would be wicked cool or like Skyrim or something like that, or even, you know, horizon zero dawn, whatever it is just mobily, like on vacation, like this would be really cool. Yeah. And they're pretty generally priced for like starting prices i mean but obviously the most upgraded ones are more expensive but yeah base model like if you're getting 720p at 30 or 50 frames a second that's fine for a little handheld system right for when you're out on the town i don't know for me that's it so again i am new to destiny so i just learned a couple of weeks ago what twab was <laughs> and a few people this weekend, like I, yes, thank you, Dick. But forever, I thought it, somebody was, I thought it was like, like somebody slang for something fucking rude or dirty and <laughs> like forever. And everybody's like, did you read the TWAB? And I'm just like, I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about, but stop. I don't want to know your dirty shit. And then finally somebody sent me a link and it says this week at this, well, this, this week at Bungie parentheses twab and the date I was like, well, now I feel like a fucking moron. <laughs> so I clicked on it and we got this crazy news last week about all the gearing changes and mod components are gone, but you're going to be able to do this and that and this and that. And I'm reading it going, I don't know what half the stuff sounds like, but the one thing that they said that actually makes sense is they're getting rid of mod components and they're going to make more mods available. It's about fucking time. And I've only yes. played the gun for the game for six months or four yeah. months, whatever it is. Like, why would you ever restrict people to get the things they need? And it's on like, uh, what was it? Guarded by the light. Is that a mod? No, something of the light protected flight. Yes. Protector of the light or something like that. I got a message from a friend of the show, Ben, and he messaged me. He's like, you need to log into destiny before midnight right away and you need to get this mod right away no matter what you do because you might not see this mod again for a year and i was like a year he's like yeah i was like well that's fucking stupid i'm buying it you know what i mean um so but this week we didn't get a twab or a twat whatever you want to call it um <laughs> we did not get one and i don't know why yeah, we did we did yeah came out today yeah oh every th every thursday by the way oh. oh well that's fucking stupid bungie your reset is on Tuesday, so release your TWAB on. Oh my God, is this? Oh, thank you. This is... <laughs> You're welcome. Wow. It wasn't. As, it wasn't as juicy this it, week. See, you know what the happens, next... Marcus? Usually, yeah. the past few weeks, we wait until Thursday to do our show notes. Yes. So we were actually proactive and did them ahead of time, and that's why we didn't see it. <laughs> All right. So, what are battlegrounds? <clears throat> uh, they're basically like a. Uh... I think you can, you might have access to them now, but um, they're kind of like a strike, only a little bit longer. And it's the heavily enemy dense thing, basically. Uh, so it's like usually like three areas that you'll have to battle your way through. Um, it's good for doing bounties if you're a gator. Um, I find them tedious and boring. Okay. All right. I'll give you, I'll give you a little pointer on these. <laughs> no spoilers. On the cabal ones, don't run in the middle. Because the little cabal balls, it's so comical to watch oh, all they the land people on you? run out there. Yeah. Oh, they just flatten you. Oh, welcome to my world in Gambit. Okay. <laughs> I'll be playing and I'll go, what the fuck? And they're like, tell me that thing just hit you. Yep, it did. <laughs> Done. Um. Oh, wow. So now we know that the twat comes out on <laughs> fucking Thursdays. Thursday. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I thought they were, fuck these guys. It's usually about 5, it's usually about 5 p.m. <laughs> on uh the East Coast, <laughs> but it was early. It was early today, wasn't it? I yeah, think it was like uh, it was two o'clock today. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, now we know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, in Swotor news, uh, big shout out to Darth Dad Gaming. 
uh, twitch.tv slash Darth Dad underscore gaming friend of the nerds community. Yep. Um, he's come hang out with him on Monday night. He's doing a giant giveaway for Spice Space Barbie and dual challenge. I'm not really sure what he's giving away, but it's awesome. Um, I told him I would definitely promote it, which Monday's my birthday. And it's Monday night, 9 p.m. Eastern um, at twitch.tv twitch slash Darth Dad underscore gaming. Perfect. Yes. Um, so we did get the announcement that they are not releasing the weapons outfitter at the launch of 7.0. And I just am fucking deflated. You guys ever, like, I don't know if Bungie does this because I haven't been involved, but like, you know, when you over promise, but under deliver, that's what Bioware's doing with this expansion. Yeah, big time. Like, this is their biggest, ten, there, it's a 10 year anniversary that they've been talking about for 10 years. And it just seems to me like every week, it's just like one less thing, one less thing, one less thing, one less thing that is less. But Nick, do you want to read the Hey Folks yeah, from so, Eric? <clears throat> uh, hey Folks, quick update on one of the features slated to launch with Legacy of the Sith. Weapons being added to Outfitter. Uh, unfortunately, this feature will not be shipping alongside the expansion and instead will be coming in Game Update 7.1. We have made this decision due to the feature not being ready for the uh, PTS testing this week. It is important to us that we get our your thoughts on it before it goes in-game, especially since we know how excited everyone is to see it come to life in Star Wars of the Public, and as are we. Uh, you shouldn't have to wait too long before seeing it, though. Our goal is to get 7.1's PTS started in February. We're currently targeting the week before or the week after 7.0's launch. So thank you for your, pa for your patience. We know you're just as eager... Uh, as we are to enjoy this added level of character customization. Sincerely, Eric Musco. Um, yeah, it's just disappointing. And I'm telling you, like, so guys, this expansion was supposed to come out in December. They delayed it nine weeks to February 15th. So on February 15th, I'll be playing the expansion. But on 222222, mm -hmm. it will be Witch Queen. Like, I just feel as if, like, and I'm going to still play it. It's just crazy yeah anyways nick in aie news uh the first friday of every month is friday flashpoint night we go through master mode flashpoints in star wars Old republic where we help get players get their super duper special vehicle mounts flashpoints if you don't know are the uh up to four person group content that run you about 45 minutes to an hour at the most and master mode is of course the most difficult for flavor of flashpoints and for you guys it's like a strike just Start four up. person. It starts uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and goes till whenever, but they're pretty awesome. Uh, Tuesdays are the place to be in AIE. Tuesdays are our fun mandatory, sorry, our mandatory fun night where the fun is mandatory, but attendance is not. It's our fun open guild night um, where we usually do all kinds of different content. Usually it's like a, an operation of some kind, right? Marcus? Yes. Um, it's just fun to get together with everybody, play a little Star Wars content. And this weekly event runs every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So be there if you want to have fun. And the fourth Saturday of every month is the most important event. How many Saturdays is that? That's four Saturdays. Wait, do you guys know what four Saturdays sounds like? Oh, I know what it means, but I'm going to let you say it. What is it? <laughs> so four Saturdays is Saturday, 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 and it's Mega, the monthly epic guild activity. Well, we'll sell you the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. <laughs> it doesn't get old. Mega. <laughs> so this Saturday, this coming Saturday, which is uh, 129. Disclaimer. Working class search is not responsible for any ear eardrum damage <laughs> caused by Mega. Um, <laughs> this Saturday I'll be host. I'm back. It's our first one of 2022. We will be back doing a world boss hunt on the Imperial side, which is the best side. And we're going to start at 9 PM Eastern to 11 PM ish. Uh, make sure you're there. Watch the discord for all the info. And if all this sounds fun to you, go to AIE dash guild.org. Get our Discord information in the top right-hand portion of the website and ask for a guild invite, whether or not you play Star Wars The Old Republic or any of the other games that we play, including, but not limited to, Destiny 2, Horizon, whatever, uh, Call of Duty, Halo, 
Guild Wars 2. <laughs> Gator not playing Jedi Fallen Order. <laughs> exactly. I'm come, gonna play it. I'm gonna play it. Come I get will. involved, and we would love to have you. Nick, I know you have to pee. I definitely do. So we'll be right back. <laughs> Jeez, Nick, hurry up. We're trying to finish this podcast. And we're back. So today we're talking to the gentleman from the Guardian Down podcast. If you weren't listening to the first half of the show, I don't know how you got here, but their names are Hazel and Gator, and they're awesome. Hey, um, the first half of the show was an hour and 20 minutes or something. <laughs> That's the first half. So what? It's game time. Buddy. It, it is game time. All right. So a couple questions, but the first most important one is how, well, it's kind of part A and part B. How did Guardian Down podcast start and how did you guys meet? You want me to, or are you Hazel? You want to take part of it? I'll take the other part. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, we were part of a, uh, another podcast that I covered destiny Two called the dad's tales podcast. Whoa. That's a great name. That is yeah. a great name. And they, uh, they were, they were ending their podcast or at least their active streak of podcasting. And people were like, well, wait a minute, where are we going to, where are we going to listen to a podcast, you know, every week. Right. And Hazel and I, I came in late into this community from another clan I broke up from and Hazel and I would always go at each other in clan chat on the destiny app. And everyone always just kind of knew that we always kind of picked on each other, which was kind of a sign of respect in a way. If, you know, if you're, you're a dude, you kind of know, yeah, 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 that's just the way it is. But, and we had pretty good chemistry. I mean, we would, uh, <laughs> we would insult everybody about every other day and everyone would kind of laugh and we get into it about something I can't remember right now, but anyway, long story short, everyone started saying, well, why doesn't Hazel and Gator do a podcast? And I'd never podcasted a day in my life. I was like, I, I, I wouldn't even know where to begin. And Hazel, you had a little bit of podcasting experience. I believe you had done a podcast. I before. tried, yeah. I tried and then it failed miserably. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I mean, I said, what the hell? I said, uh, I went and learned how to, I learned how to edit. I learned how to record two tracks and just, we just said hell with it. Me and Hazel decided to roll the dice and just, and just get started and just, you know, we can always quit if yes. it doesn't work. I mean, that's you know, the great funny. thing about podcasts. All I heard out of that was like, learned how to record two tracks and do all that. Cause Nick, we don't even know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do. Lot, oh no. We always YouTube. record one track. You're right. Lots well, that's just when we're side by side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was it was a disaster. But you our, know, our first few episodes are just terrible. But it's too. great if you go back. Like I'll tell you guys, go listen to our first episode ever from 2017. Oh my god, there's so much rambling. No, no. It, there's well, it's not even the rambling. You can hear the chair squeak because we have the gain all the way up. You yes. can hear all the PC fans. <laughs> yeah. Like we were so proud of that episode, and now coming to our our quality now, it's like a different show. No, but yeah. It's yeah. whatever. Anyway. Yeah. Um, it's the same thing here with us. I mean, we have a, a thing in our podcast called the speed run and we found fast. out that there's something that we're called like, basically it's like, what is the name of it? Automatic like input control or something like this in discord. So it'll cut off like the beginning of whatever you say. Oh man. It was so bad. And um, so here we are doing this fast fire question. That's kind of competitive. And like it's cutting off at like, the beginning of what people are saying, so we're only hearing like, I mean, like I forget one thing was like, what's your favorite color? And we heard ass, and we we're like, okay, we don't know what the hell they're, they're saying, ah. but I said I just kept going. <laughs> yeah, we ended up having a whole episode where we righted all the wrongs for all our past guests. We brought them on one at a time and redid the once we knew what we were doing. But it was automatic game control, by the way. Yeah, yeah. We, you take that off in Discord. You you set your own game control. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah. Is that the noise suppression? No, that's crisp. Oh. That's really good. I, I like. I use that, by the way. But uh, I usually have. A, I just got a soundboard too, so I got a new toy I'm playing with. Hazel loves it. You can't. I got all these game clips game of all of our, all of our last three years. I record little clips of guests and us. And yep. whenever the mood suits me, I have like three pages of sounds that I just pull from and I'm going to be getting better at it. That's fun. No, he's but not. yeah, I mean, it, we, we've kind of evolved over the years and we've been doing it for almost three years now. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And we started off and we had um, a third co-host easy 
and uh, he had to leave. basically he left the podcast because he his wife was having another kid. So he's like, yeah, I, he's like, I'll be back on eventually. <laughs> so it's like, okay, no two and a half years later, yeah, well, we just had him on. I feel, well, yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like a podcast is meant for two, two hosts. And a guest, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Like the, as your base format. You right. Know? Like unless you're having the same three on never a guest, you know, because in the beginning we weren't really guest people. And now every episode there's a guest. Well, well no, I, I mean, I feel like we had guests. We didn't have it every episode, but it was like maybe every other after episode mm-hmm. like 10 or so. Yeah. I think See, episode, it's the opposite. Yeah. It's the opposite for us. For us. Yeah. Nick. We, yeah. we, we, the, in fact, tomorrow we're recording our first solo show in a while where yeah. we can actually talk amongst ourselves because yeah. when we bring guests on, it's all about hearing their, their gaming story, how they got there. Right. And that's, that's what I love about podcasting. Number one is hearing people's stories, kind of putting yourself in their shoes, yeah. kind of realizing how they got that gamer tag, you know? And, and oh the second God. thing I love about podcasting, <laughs> let's hear about Marcus's gamer tag after this. <laughs> no, uh, oh, I'm sorry. You know what? You know what? No, there I, was a what? meme. There was a video I saw, and it was this guy, and he was sitting in front of his computer, and his wife like rolled up, and she's like, oh, "It's a TikTok. con, quifador, con quifador." And he, she looks at him and your goes, gamer your gamer tag is con Quifador. <laughs> and he's just laughing like exactly like you guys like it. She goes, I want a divorce. <laughs> and I'm like, this is great. So, yes. Well, I would, I would like to formally extend an invitation. If you guys want to come on, we'd like to hear your story. Yes. Oh my God. Sure. Anytime. Anytime. Yeah. Of and course. You, you don't have to bring any of this fancy recording equipment. You just show up and talk into the mic and we'll take care of the rest. Wow. But uh, fancy, uh, the other thing, fancy equipment. I got uh, a mic and a uh, twelve dollar boom. Yeah, I know. I, I like this. I like the setup you have, though. Uh, but the other thing I like about podcasting is I like discussions. I can really get into a discussion, and we've had some doozies. Mm-hmm. Whether it's the Spider Man movie, oh, or yeah. whether it is, uh, which you guys aren't going to like me on that one, uh, <laughs> or or we talk about the Activision split and the yeah. Activision absorption and yeah merger, and, uh, if you will. Yes. You You're not happy that. about it? About what? The Activisions? Uh, oh, we, we really don't want to go there. No, I'm just asking. Why not? I, I'm just... Maybe uh, like the, 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 the I think quick it's, version? We don't no, have to yeah, debate, yeah. but... No, my biggest... Okay, in a nutshell, my biggest fear is that is that Xbox and Microsoft will own everything eventually, and we'll only have Game Pass. We but, won't be able to purchase games anymore. Well, oh, I, I think that's where it's going no matter what. No matter what you do. PlayStation right. is, PlayStation's doing cloud gaming as well. Yeah. The, the future of gaming is streaming it because they're going to, like, when we're at 10G on our phones, everything's yep. going to be instantaneous. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, yep. it, honestly, I'd be more worried about fucking Facebook in the metaverse over Microsoft. See, the acquisition for Activision Blizzard by Microsoft, what does concern me is like Disney. Disney owns everything, right? They can create a narrative in all of their games and stop things from happening in their games. So like Fallen Order, I'm going to give an example of Fallen Order. Because of Star Wars IP, remember in the, was it the beta? Or there was testing done by streamers where Cal Kestis, the Jedi, yeah, he was impaling stormtroopers. Disney came in and said, uh-uh, you can't impale anybody. See, that's my problem. Yeah. Yes. There's, so I agree. Every, everything has to be, whether it's Marvel, Disney, and DC hasn't done it yet. Everyone has to family. Everything has to be appealed to the whole family now. So you're losing that. You're losing a little bit of that darkness in some of these movies. And that's what I am not happy about. Well, I agree and I disagree. So did you watch No Way Home? That is not a yeah. family movie. Oh, okay. It, okay. R.I.P. You know who? Yeah. Most beautiful boobs on the planet. Okay. Mm-hmm. Rest in <laughs> peace. Okay. <laughs> like, but yeah. what I'm saying yeah. is, but like, I mean, also the content of the movie is, is relatively dark as well. Just the mm-hmm. themes. So well, like, you're right. but I, uh, your point still stands. I agree. Largely. Like <clears throat> I do, but like, you're right about some of the things, but like even, but like they impaling, let's say that okay. a lightsaber impales. Like Django Fett's head went. 
Yeah, on I the mean, ground, like rolled like a bowling ball. Well, yeah, Qui Gon Jinn dies via and getting impaled by a lightsaber. Exactly. Yeah. So not putting that in a game is silly to me. Is silly to me as well. Yeah. yeah. Or it should have been like Mortal Kombat, like A B A C A B B, and like it's a finisher. And it's and no, like it's a... the blood code, like right. turn off impaling. You oh, know what I mean? Like yeah. the default is it's off. So if a kid plays it, right. you know what I mean? Sure. I don't know. Um, but other than that is that the only thing you're upset about or is it because you're a PlayStation main and you feel like you're not going to get the games that you want to play on PlayStation? I, I do feel some trepidation there because I, I, I play PlayStation. See, everyone's talking about Sega master systems and all these games they played as a kid. Yeah. I was, I was PlayStation one all the way PlayStation yeah. one to, to today. And I'm just now getting into PC gaming and it's, it's fantastic. But we had this argument with my son. We had my son on the show last I week. I listened to the show. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, we got into it. So it, my, my opinion is not always popular because I'm the old fart in the group. And I'm very old school when it comes to gaming. And I uh, I don't know if you know, a, there's another podcast. I, I, I don't know if uh, it's cool to shout him out or not. but Of course it is. Let it's, it uh, yeah. it's, it's His name is 30 and still gaming. He's not 30 anymore. He's 40, by the way. But he lives locally here in the Orlando area. And um, we actually get together for lunch. And what will be 30 minutes will turn into three hours talking yes. games. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm a very much of the same belief of him. That games one are, are never inf- are never finished. It's all about cranking out games on on time, whether they're finished or not. I spent a hundred dollars. I even hate to say this. I spent a hundred dollars on Battlefield twenty forty two, and oh. they haven't even seen the season yet. Right. So I even started a podcast for Battlefield twenty forty two. We, we had somebody on the show like yeah. That. Uh, oh my god, Sage Goodwin. Yeah, Sage, yeah, Sage, Sage Goodwin. Yeah, yeah, Sage Goodwin. That sounds very familiar. He, Sage Goodwin had a star has Star Wars uplink podcast, and then they made the Battlefield show with a YouTuber named Sammy, Sammy Boy about Battlefield, because yeah. Battlefield was good, like Battlefield's amazing, mm-hmm. and again, and I do agree with you, but that is games coming out before they're ready. That is the board board of directors or the investment call not wanting to lose their stock options. But what they don't realize is a bad game. They didn't want to lose their quarter four, but they end up losing anyways because nobody buys a game and now it's five dollars on Steam and people still aren't buying it. It's irritating. Right. And they're talking right. about going and, free now. Oh, I mean, it's just it's so irritating to even for, I, I mean for I've even been tempted 42. to go to PlayStation yeah. to get my money back. Wow. Well, you can. They are issuing um I'm thinking about it. That's a yeah. lot of money. But try. anyway, you used to make a game and put it in a cartridge. You'd stick it in your your console. Mm-hmm. It was complete, ready to play, and you played it. There was no was live it. patch updates. But but when there was a game bug that was breaking, they couldn't fix it. I'll no. give you an example. Super <laughs> okay. Nintendo NHLPA hockey, the wrap mm. around the goal, you could score every time, no questions yeah. asked, yeah. and you had to make a rule with your friends that no wrap around goals, yeah. right, in order to play it correctly. Because you would yeah. score every time because that was the glitch in the game. The goalie could not move fast enough around that back in, say, Super Nintendo days. The gamers had a code of honor, and they fixed it themselves. Correct. Versus versus, I'm running in Battlefield 2042, and I'm glitching backwards. I can't even run all the way forward. Sorry, I'm doing this in the mic. No. I can't even <laughs> run forward because I'm glitching backwards two and three times per step. Oh. I was. Oh, but that that's is terrible. that's the producer, not the developer. Like you, like cyberpunk, cyberpunk told CJ, uh, whatever project CD red, project this red. game is not ready. And they're like, we're shipping it. We have I to ship it. Too. Yeah. I mean, the game's beautiful, but mm-hmm. it's, and it's finally fixed. I mean, fallout 76, same deal. Same thing. Yeah. Like it's, I think it has more to do with investor calls now mm-hmm. than it does the quality of games because they know people are going to buy it. They know they're going to be able to do a day one patch. And instead of, delaying they just put out an inferior product yeah i, but, I have one i have one question on fallout do they still have that glitch where people can steal all your stuff i don't do know I, I honestly I, I closely followed 76 up through okay. launch um it's an mmo ish style right. so i wasn't i fallout is probably my favorite franchise lore wise of all time marcus hates it but i love fallout <laughs> um 
I, I really like Bethesda's RPGs in general, just the, the yeah. style. Mm-hmm. But I recognize they're super buggy, and I never, I've never even played Fallout seventy six because of how terrible okay. it was at launch. Okay, yeah. just curious. But yeah, I hope that I mean, recent events like let people smarten up some so they don't pre order games as much anymore. Yeah, I, I never will now. I'm done. No. Yeah. yeah. After <laughs> I pre order, I was going to pre order uh, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. I didn't. Uh, I think I bought alcohol instead or something. But I. <laughs> That's <laughs> so a better like, investment. Ah. Yeah, it, obviously, in hindsight, it definitely is. But I, I did something, and I did not pre-order it. Like, oh, I'll just buy a day of. And then, I'll, of course, I've started seeing the early streamer reviews and, and YouTuber reviews, and I was like, this is broken. I was like, well, I'm glad I didn't. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just not going to pre-order it. There's no big, like, who cares if I don't play it on day one? You know what I mean? Um, And then uh, after a string of different games that are just completely broken at launch, I'm like, well, I, I don't need to pre-order anything. Why do I need to pre-order anything? You know, well, I, there's only only one game I pre-order, and it's because they've earned my trust, and that's Bungie. That's fair. Yeah, that's it. No I'm gonna more. call I'm your bluff. No, and I'm you done. Pre, you're, you pre-ordered it because you're gonna get free shit that you're only gonna get if you didn't pre-order it, and you're you're addicted to. Uh, oh, you, you play. You only play Destiny. So <laughs> if there's a submachine gun that you can get by pre-ordering the game that you're not gonna be able to get after, you are pre-ordering the game. The reason I pre-ordered is they gave us a deal on the 30th anniversary edition, or as I I jokingly call the 35th anniversary edition. Uh, Hazel always has to correct me, uh, but you got the uh, you got that DLC at a little bit of a discount. Other than that, there was really no reason to pre-order. Honestly, about that 30th edition, what I liked the best of it, and everybody's like, "Oh, I'm over it." Dares of Eternity, finally. Finally, they gave us content that was more than three people that anybody could play. Mm -hmm. Like my friends that are starting to play it, they're like 1200. They can't go do other shit. You know what I mean? And this is, and that's my biggest gripe about destiny is destiny is a three person game. What do you do when you have six people? That's what I love about dears of eternity. You can say whatever you want about, Oh, it's, you know, it's a game show and it's annoying but it's six person content that you can earn shit and have fun with your friends and it's do free. your and it's free and play. Well, what I like is you can do all your bounties, your guns, bounties, your mm-hmm. gunsmith bounties and all mm-hmm. that stuff. And you can earn, um, you can earn some rewards if you're lower level and it's something you can do with six of your friends. Yeah. You the know, the thing I like about dares is it actually gives you that power fantasy because most yeah. of the game, they don't give you that. You know, you can have unlimited heavy ammo, unlimited oh, Gallahorn yeah. rockets, unlimited whatever you use, unlimited sword. I ran through with like sword and killed everything. Yeah. The lament, baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the only way to kill eight tracks. Guys, you get the favor. You get unlimited. Am- you, your, your, your heavy ammo just keeps regenerating. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Guys, I have, a, fun. I have a very serious question. Oh. Um, it's incredibly important, and we're definitely going to judge you based on your answers for the rest of the show. Uh, so, both of you, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, this is easy. I'm curious what Hazel's is, though. Mine's mint chocolate chip. Ooh. Okay. Briar's mint chocolate chip. Okay. Okay. I can wrap my head around that one. Um, I, don't, I don't agree, but I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to say mine's probably cookies and cream. These are very um, popular options on people. Whenever we ask this, cookies and cream comes up a lot. Cookie dough comes up a lot. And then do we get mint chocolate chip? No, not very often. That's the no. old guy. That's just the old guy in me. Yeah. That's my kid. One of my kids. I love mint chocolate chip. What about yeah. you guys? Yeah. So I'm allergic to chocolate, so I'm a little complicated. It's a lie. Do not listen. Marcus doesn't <laughs> believe me. He tries to give me chocolate at, at any opportunity he can. It's such a puss move. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I'm one of these days I'm going to have a fucking Reese's peanut butter cup and I'm going to eat it here and we're going to do a live show. Oh He's going to be completely fine. <laughs> it's all a sham because he wants the pity party that he can't eat chocolate. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so my, I mean, Ben and Jerry's is probably my favorite, like, commercial oh. ice cream. Yeah. Um, I think my absolute favorite from them is the salted caramel core, which has like obviously mm. salted caramel in the middle. It's like a vanilla ice cream on the, you know, That's for the base. And it's got like a blondie brownie, which is a brownie without the chocolate in it. Mm-hmm. Um, like chunks throughout and that is epic. God, I need um, a cigarette right now. 
Yeah. <laughs> we take a brenda break <laughs> i uh <laughs> then my favorite ice cream of all time though is probably from this place in maine called scoop deck in wells maine um that's where we vacation as when i was younger um mm-hmm. up in wells but it's like southern maine right on the coast and it's mm-hmm. that's it's all homemade ice cream obviously but that place is wicked good too mm-hmm. their blueberry crumble has like a real like of like the sh- caramel sugar crumble crust stuff oh. in it and it's like completely purple with all the real main blueberries they put in it it's fantastic oh, i can taste that already and my favorite thing like a local ice cream place like that if you don't have preposterously two big sizes like you're failing so they're right. small single scoop are like if you especially if you get a waffle cone if you order a waffle cone no matter what size you get the whole waffle cone is filled like the very tip to all the way to the top of the the you know right. opening is filled at baseline so you're getting mm-hmm. all that already and then your sizing is scoops so your small is one scoop but each scoop is a softball size nice so like they're, they're preposterous sizes and it's just epic and the ice cream is amazing but anyways my that's my rant place. on ice cream marcus that's my what's kind your, of place <laughs> mine too marcus what's your favorite flavor um vanilla <laughs> hey no 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 don't diss them vanilla is great golden vanilla oh. fuck the fuck the vanilla bean i don't care about vanilla bean keep your vanilla bean right. and send it you out in the boston the, harbor want, you don't want the flex of uh, vanilla no i want straight up <laughs> wait a minute it's going in the boston har- haba with the tea yes <laughs> out of here with the vanilla bean okay i want straight up golden vanilla mm, you know what i'm cute. saying Good old yeah. chemical f- vanilla flavor. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you guys stream your podcast or stream games? I, yeah, I do. Hazel's getting into it. I, I stream on my YouTube channel. Um, and I what I don't, I do, we don't stream our podcast per se. But when we have raid nights or, uh, or PvP scrims with our community, or we're playing Gambit even, yeah. like a Gambit night, I'll stream it live. And usually a lot of people will drop by from our community, our discord and harass me usually, but, uh, I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun, but I'm not a, I'm not what you would call a, an avid streamer, but I love doing it for people who are maybe at work and want to tune in and watch and it's, and my friends do that. You know, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Hazel, you're getting into it too, aren't you? I am. I haven't really been doing it much, um, but I've been dabbling and it's been fun. Um, it's a little awkward sometimes because some people will actually clip what I say. Oh and yeah. Then it becomes like, Oh wow. I, I can see, I have this gift of saying a bunch of random shit that I don't know what I say. Yeah. Um, especially after the fact you're like, I really said that. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Like I've listened to our podcast before and I was like, well, I disagree with that. And I was like, why the hell did I say that? But I don't know. <laughs> um, but with stream, I mean, it's that way. And I start laughing. I was like, yeah, I guess I did say that. I mean, it's on recording, but, um, I mean, I'll stream scrims, um, raids occasionally, things like that. But for the most part, I'm doing like solo content. So like solo presage, uh, something like that, where it's, you know, something like a little, little chip on the shoulder where I can do it and brag a little bit. I understand that. Um, well, we are terrible at a live show, so we we oh. only do a live show maybe three or four times a year. Yeah, like we no. did our Christmas episode, and it was it was awesome. We had a blast. It was very fun. It is not at all good audio only. Content. No, <laughs> it, um, it, I can't not look at the chat. I can't focus on anything else. It's yeah. it's awful. We don't we don't usually like drink a lot when we're casting. <laughs> Like I like obviously we'll have like you know a little beer or something Nick, sometimes. Nick, don't let him fool you. There's fucking three Finnish <laughs> seltzers over here. Nick <laughs> likes to drink during the podcast, which is fantastic. I do, but not a lot. Yeah, like, but who cares? I drink a G Fuel at eight o'clock at night, and I'll be all jacked up until midnight. But that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. But again, like we love the podcast. This software is awesome because before we never had the video. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. It just lets you like at least we're not like, obviously we're not recording the the video portion, but it lets no, us see each other, but which yeah. makes the guest interaction way it's better. way better, oh, yeah. right? Is. And yeah. you could see that Nick is way better looking than me, and he's the star I don't know of the about show. All that. Yeah, but like, you have a really nice beard, though. You know, thanks. I'll yeah, call your beard nice definitely beard is better than mine. Um, yeah. this is about as long as mine can get before it starts to look a little sketchy. <laughs> but anyway, what I'm trying to say is like, it's it's so we don't do a live show often. 
And when we do, we'll just stream it on my Twitch channel just because, yeah. you know. It's more for fun than anything else. Right. But. Now, we uh, we do actually have started live streaming our podcast. It's something called, it's in Discord called the Stage Channel. It Think of it as streaming without the video. And, man, we have a lot of people stop by on that. And people, what they do is they can join this Stage Channel and just listen in live. And mm-hmm. then there's a separate chat and se- a separate uh, chat channel where we we can keep an eye on it. And actually, just like Twitch or anything else, we can actually, you know, and we often do get distracted in chat. Oh, yeah. Uh, Listen, I've been enjoying your podcast. Thanks. Like, I, I do enjoy it. What I like yeah. is the rambling because we call it in our show. It's <laughs> called the do. sidebar. You know what I mean? And it's just another <laughs> sidebar. This is yeah. when our first show, our first shows were like maybe an hour. Right. Because we you're like, we made. 48 minutes let's go and now it seems like every fucking show is two hours plus oh yeah <laughs> see I mean, it's the opposite we're almost right now <laughs> it's the opposite with us we started out with giant shows and slowly we've been trying to get them smaller i try to stay under the three hour mark mm-hmm. but the see our show is like a radio show except we don't do uh you know we don't do traffic and weather on every 15 minutes yeah but uh we have segment it's a segmented show so being that we have so many segments in our show, if we took any of that out, we'd probably hear about it because everyone's used to our segmented shows, whether it's a speed run sure. or our or Spotify playlist ads or community our, questions, we, community yeah. questions are a highlight. Uh, we have our guest interview that usually takes 30 to 45 minutes right there. Yeah. And once you add it all up and I'm looking at all these tracks, I'm like, oh, it's over three hours again. Uh, what can I do? I try to cut content and we have a Patreon now where I, if we have extra parts of our show, I'll just throw it in there and uh, people will be able to get some extra content out of it, which is kind of cool. We have that coming up as well. Yeah. (laughs) It's a lot of fun. You know, we're, we're very um, slow on the extras. Like I've been, so I, we hired a guy to take all of our episodes and put them in a Google drive and ready for video for like, on YouTube, I, all of them are sitting there. All of them. I've uploaded one. <laughs> <laughs> one of 130, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So either way, um, what is your favorite part of Destiny and what's your least favorite? One thing of each. Hazel, you go first this time. No, thanks a lot, dickhead. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean... For me, the my favorite part is definitely the interacting with people. I mean, be it, you know, helping somebody. Like, I mean, I did the Grasp of Avarice, that new the new dungeon that came out. Yeah. With a new clan or not, yeah, a new clan member, uh, Chikorita or Chiquita. And I mean, it was the first time that she's ever done a dungeon and her boyfriend plays. And he hasn't done it either. So she's got like Gallahorn now and she's running around shooting him with it and hmm. like every time she's just like you know she's like you know this is so great you know this is awesome and it's just it's just that you know it's just being around helping people get something that they typically wouldn't do it's like nick like if you went ahead and you like ventured into destiny and you're like okay i'm doing all this solo stuff but then they drop a dungeon and you're like well i really want to kind of do that i know i can do it i can try it solo but it's going to take me you know x amount of time to do that right you know it's you know it's that interaction yeah i understand and what's your least favorite part of it my least favorite part is i mean something that i've never experienced quite frankly and that's the new light experience um because i don't know if you guys i i I, you guys i know you haven't looked at the twab but um in the twab there's something in there a video and it's um i think it's m press i saw that uh here it is. uh yeah the movie of the week immerse play and i'll tell you this if you watch this now okay you recently joined the game six months ago right yeah ish yeah ish. okay four to six months ago okay so you went through the new light experience what's that mean um basically like you you spawned in and you were sitting amongst like these cars and you had to walk around and uh it's in the car talk to a guy named shaw shaw hen i don't think so nope no No. wow i came in and it led me right into the first mission of beyond light 
like as soon as I loaded the game for the first time, it loaded me right into beyond light and I had to do this mission and it was hard as fuck. And mm-hmm. I was like, and I said this to my friends, I was like, should this game be this hard as soon as you lo- lo- load in? And they said no. And then they ended up joining. And then I found the cheat code, how to get up your light level really, really fast. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, the reason why I ask is because it's pretty bare bones. Uh, I think you can still go and you can still pick it up from that little kiosk over there next to the postmaster. Sure. But if you watch this video, it's so... Can you link it in the show notes? Oh, yeah. Um, well, it it's after. on the TWAB. I put the TWAB in the show notes. All right. So, yeah, yeah. I'll look. Um, but... It's... So are you saying you don't like the new light level? Oh, it's a mess. The new, the new light experience? Yeah, I don't like it because it's, it's basically just throwing... It's throwing people into just stuff and it doesn't explain what's going on or anything else. And when I watched this video, it made me think about it. And I was like, Oh my God, you know, it'd be really cool because your ghost is actually helping you. Like, I mean, with everything. So, um, it's telling you basically that, Hey, you know, you can, you know, shoot the legs on this thing to make it blow up and then you can damage it. And it's like, Oh, you know, like, cause they don't tell you that in the game. It, they just throw you to the wolves and you know, everything else and all i kept thinking about is that if bungie made the game this way then they wouldn't lose anyone everyone would play this and then they'd have this experience and i mean i know everything that happened in this mission everything and i was watching this video and i'm like you know i didn't know what was i knew what was going to happen but i didn't know like the dialogue and everything else it explained everything really really well Well, I think that's okay. So because I'm an MMO player, I will say it's all MMOs. All MMOs are not new player friendly because these games have been going on for years and years. Like me as a new player, if I didn't have my two friends who are avid destiny players, I would not be playing the game today. Just like Nick, when he played Star Wars: The Old Republic, I wouldn't have. He I wouldn't have, have made it for like five minutes. If yes, if, if he else. didn't have me there to help him, like, what do I do here? What do I do here? Yeah, would have never. Honestly, the only game that I know of ha- that has updated their new player experience is World of Warcraft, and they throw you in an area that's a tutorial area, teaches you all the shit, and then you pick the expansion you want to go to. But at least when you leave that tutorial section you know what's going on yeah but all mmos are that way it's not just destiny yeah but i just i don't know i mean i just think that it i mean to me i just i expect more you know because i love this game i want to get people to play this game i've conned my wife into starting it for witch queen whoa yeah yeah i have no idea how the hell that's gonna go but well especially keyboard and mouse or a controller controller yeah. Well, especially if she falls in love with it and now she needs you to put the kids to bed because she wants to go <laughs> kill the witch queen before you. Fuck it. I'm fine with that. If that's the case, you know. Well done. More well power played. Clip this. Send it to your wife right now. <laughs> Admit it. Yeah. Yeah. Dad duty engaged. Exactly. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's just I watched the video and I just thought to myself, like, this is what the new light experience should be right here. Yeah. It, I mean, it's really hard. Okay. It's really hard to do that because the developers have to think of both sides of the coin and I'm going to play developer here and okay. I'm not one. It, I feel like you have to, you have to take care of your veterans as much as your new players. And mm-hmm. if they invest two months of development time on this new player experience, mm-hmm. but that's less content for a veteran player, what's more valuable, the veteran player or a new player that potentially could come in because it's really hard to say. Yeah. I mean, I understand that, but here's the thing though, is that the, the video it's the, still the same gameplay. All it is is simply dialogue that's changed. Right. Yeah. And the dialogue alone to me made that whole video. Okay. I'm going to watch it. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. It's really I'll cool. watch it. It's 20 minutes. Something appears and uh, the, the person mission. just freaks out. She just, they just freak out. 
Yeah, that's yeah, pretty cool. Um, Gator, what's what's your favorite part of Destiny and your least favorite part? See, I'm a diehard Call of Duty player. Uh, I've all I play really are first person shooters. That's hey, Nick. what's up, Nick? Yeah, that's Nick. Um, I played in adult clans, pretty hardcore, for probably over a decade. In fact, I have some of my original buddies in my clan now. It's oh, really cool. cool. Yeah, it's really cool. They're they they love Destiny, and I was so burnt out around 2014 and then i saw this live action trailer of the destiny reveal uh shown at e3 that year yeah yeah. and i was like uh is fall here yet because i'm ready (laughs) and i was ready i played the beta about 40 times i mean i was so hooked on this game but i used here's the thing the world the the, this is considered an open world action mmo rpg ff first person shooter Say that three times fast because there's nothing out there like this. Right. This is its own game type, really. All right, fine. But the thing (laughs) I used to do, being that it's open world, I used to just sit on the Cosmodrome on the cliffside and just sit there and just listen. The game sounds and everything. And I it would just totally transform me into that world. And I was hooked after that. The the see, I Open. The, I wouldn't say this is open world. Oh, it, it's an illusion. Yes. Yes. It's an instanced world. What I mean yes. by that, like Red Dead Redemption, that's open world. Star yeah. Wars: The Old Republic, that like you can walk an entire planet, and really? sometimes you have to, and you're falling asleep driving your speeder around the whole planet. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that was my biggest really? gripe playing Star Wars: The Old Republic is the travel <laughs> times are horrific. Right, uh, but yeah. at the same time, but it's also great. Okay, so that's. Your favorite. So I mean, I mean, they have the they have excellent gun mechanics and handling, the deep story arcs, the deep lore of this game, Mm -hmm. and the eye candy. I mean, let's face it, the Destiny universe is gorgeous, and I I don't want to copy Hazel, but we talked about this last week. The new player experience. I have friends that played Destiny One, that I was heartbroken that I couldn't bring them to Destiny Two. They would come and and decide to go ahead and buy the free version or you know jump in the free version. And they're like, well, I can't play with you because I'm not high enough light to do what you want to do. And I'm like, that's fine. I'll start a new account. I'll play with you. You could just see really quickly they lost interest. And they've we've lost so many people from Destiny 1 to Destiny 2. And, and let's face it, Destiny 2 was not a real success when it first started. Yeah. Because there again, two steps forward, one step back. They took a lot of the features out of Destiny 1 that I really loved. And they added some new ones, but it wasn't the same game. It's and corporate. Yes, mm-hmm. you're, you're right. Completely. You're right. Uh, I, and Bun- go ahead. Bungie was part of Activision back then. I mean, Bungie, did they dodge a bullet or what? I mean, they well, bought themselves free. They would have been owned again by Microsoft. Well, hey, you want to? <laughs> you guys want to hear something crazy? What's that? My tinfoil hat is I think they had the dirt on Activision Blizzard. And they were like, look at you're going to release us out of our contract. You are going to allow us to own all the rights, oh. or we are dropping this to the press. I and Bungie was, was like, easy. see yeah. you later. <laughs> Deuces. We made yeah. our money. You guys go have fun. We're out. Yeah. Oh, you, you might be right. it, yeah. You know, and man, whatever. I guess blackmail worked there. Yeah. I mean, just did. I mean, I would Bungie respect Bungie something a, whole, we did. a lot more if that were the case. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay. That, that's my worst part. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just piggybacking off what Hazel said, but it's really the, really the, it's really the black eye of this game is it doesn't really, it doesn't really guide new players. New players heads are spinning by the time they get past the first couple of things. And if, and a lot of times they're throwing you right into dares of eternity. Well, that was just a bug for a week. Oh they, no. My they, son got thrown into it. He oh. hadn't played. He, he was like 900 light level. He jumped back in to play the new, the new stuff and he got thrown, you know, that's but the first again, thing that's they do. because he picked the wrong, he didn't start a new game. He didn't start a new character. Yeah. The new light experience. I played it. I have several accounts. I I've, I play the new light experience just so I know what it's like for a new player, but you're not a new player though, but I'm not. We've that's the problem. It's not, you're I know we have, I know I'm already, <laughs> I already know how to, how to power up. I know well, what to go yes, look for, but that's what I love about dares of eternity Dares mm-hmm. of Eternity helps me as a player, and it helps yeah. Nick. I'm using right. Nick as an example as a new player. <laughs> uh, my friend Rad Dad, he Rad Dad started playing the game with me, and we were just did dares every night, and I didn't care because That's I fun. would just you know I was getting my bounties and I was grinding mod components, 
and it was just fun to be able to play with them. Yes, my light level wasn't going up, but at the end of the day, you have to play the game, and that's why I think that's the hardest part when you get to an end game of an MMO. That's where the separation comes. Yeah, And that's the one thing my biggest gripe on Destiny is the three power levels, the soft cap, the pin- the powerful cap, and then yeah. the pinnacle, pinnacle cap. Yeah. The power cap should be it. Once you're at max level, that's it. Then you can do your bullshit seasonal artifact cap. But there should be no pinnacle because that's what separates you. And then they make content that they're making it so that you have to be pinnacle cap plus 15 or whatever art of the seasonal cap. And then you can do the hardest content. And if, unless you're an elite player, like elite players don't want to play with somebody that's brand new to the game because it's not helping them get to that pinnacle cap. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And that's what I'm finding now is in the game is my biggest thing is they're gating me from leveling up because I've already done all my weekly stuff. And that's, what's really pushed me. Yeah. And that's, what's not, that's, what's pushed me from not, committing fully to destiny streaming mm-hmm. because if i can't constantly upgrade then what's the point of it's almost like day? they need to take the brakes off of it after a certain point where they're just like fuck it do what you want yeah but if you didn't have i'm playing Des, i'm playing bungie here if there was no power grind if there was no grind in the game once you're done playing the the the, the activities they have out you get bored of it you move on so you have to have some amount of grind in the game. So you check in every day. I, I mean, it's that. like, it's like a checklist for me. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm ADHD, so I have to check boxes and I have to complete things and, and I have to feel good about it. I get my little dopamine hit and I'm on, I'm on my way, but I'm yeah. The same way. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we're all a little bit like that, but anyway, that's another topic for another day. <laughs> But, that's, a to- uh, that's a topic for uh, for not, Dr. Gameology not. to discuss. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. Guys, yeah. what are some of your podcast goals? Well, I know one of them Hazel is involved in right now with the uh, Monday nights. Oh, scrims or yeah. raid night. I mean, basically like community, like community nights. So every Monday and Wednesday night, they alternate, but it's scrims or raid night. What's a scrim? Uh, scrim is a scrimmage for pvp so it's basically private match so that way you can go ahead and you can practice and try to get better yeah hazel is the pve guy i'm the pvp guy Mm -hmm. but don't don't let that confuse you we both play each i have 3500 hours in destiny 2 2000 in destiny i'm sure hazel's right there at the same amount but he's don't let him sell you short he's a very good raid sherpa he knows how to just keep things calm. Everybody's getting frustrated and, and on the mechanics and stuff. And he'll just slowly, calmly walk you through it. I, we did a, a Leviathan raid the first time we actually raided together. And I was blown away. He he has that really good sense to just slowly bring people through a raid very calmly. Sure. And I would be like, uh, all right, uh, well, have you tried this? You know, and I'm not as patient. I'm a, just the old grumpy guy. But Hazel's not. That's, I, that's Marcus. Yeah, I'm <laughs> what? Not patient? <laughs> You're definitely not patient. Well, <laughs> it depends what I'm doing. If I'm raid leading in SWOTOR, I am very patient because I understand yeah. people have to learn. If you're sending your 17-year-old cousin to go get uh, the board stretcher out of the back of a work van. But that's different. That's an age-old <laughs> tradition for all carpenters to make their brand-new off the boat, <laughs> green, like never used a tape measure before. Guy, go look for the board yeah. stretcher. Right. It's 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 a it's passed right, on tradition. It's right next to the blinker fluid. You can't miss it. Exactly. <laughs> um, I work to construction. I know all about what you're talking about. But yeah. I do understand what you're saying about community. Um, Nick and I started this podcast, and when we started streaming, we created this nerds community and it's grown immensely and it's amazing to it's really where cool, yeah. it's come. So I do understand like the Monday night skirm or PVP. Mm-hmm. I understand that community building because when you do that, people feel more attached to the show as much as mm-hmm. you guys, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And the other side of it too, is that with like the scrims, that's not just for our clan. 
So we're getting people that are from like joining our discord from like dis like clans that I've never heard of before. Sure. And they're just like, Hey, I heard you, I heard your podcast. I heard you do scrims. So I'm, you know, here I am. And now those people are like contributing to our, like on our discord and everything else. And it's, I mean, it's just great. It's really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is really cool to watch that growth. All right. My favorite question of all of the podcast, Nick's is the ice cream one. Um, I know. I like this one too. This one's my favorite. Uh, I'm going to ask Gator first. Who is your favorite Star Wars character? Okay. I had to think about this one. My dad actually took me. Watch. My my dad actually took me and we waited in line (laughs) in 1977 to see episode four when it first came out. So I've been hooked Uh, on Star Wars. I've been hooked on Star Wars for a long time. So uh, obviously who didn't have a crush on Princess Leia, but I was a, I was a Guinness guy. I loved Obi-Wan Kenobi. All the right. wise, the wise, uh, hermit. Yeah. The hermit. And, but he, but he always knew what was going to happen. He always knew it was going to go on, but I got to tell you recently, black Kersantan. I love that guy. That's cool. From the, from the book of Boba Fett. Yes. Yeah. I, yes, yes. you know, and I, and I didn't read any of the novels and stories, but it's making me want to now. Me because, too. You know, that's part of the, part of the, some of the lore. So yeah, that's mine. Those are good. Answers. So you like Alex Guinness, uh, yes. Obi Wan Kenobi, yes, and Black or Satan as the honorable mention. Honorable mention. Uh, how about you, Hazel? Okay. Um. So I'm. I okay. So I was fearful of this when I saw this question. Why? <laughs> don't ever fear anything. You. You. I don't think you would possibly guess what mine is. So totally fine. Okay. Well, I didn't watch Star Wars until I graduated high school. Okay. So. <laughs> Gator no, there's nothing wrong with that. So yeah. yeah, so I didn't have like this attachment to it. Like, and when I first watched it, I actually saw episode one first. Okay. So then I went and watched the three original trilogy, and I mean, I just think Han Solo's the man. All right. Yeah, he just flies around the galaxy, banging everything in his path. He's what's yeah, wrong he's with a smuggler? That? What's wrong? There's with that? nothing wrong with that. He's just that guy. <laughs> He's just a problem solver. Well, I'll tell you. So in, in Star Wars, the Old Republic, you can be a smuggler. That's mm-hmm. one of the classes you can play. And I played it just like as if I was Han Solo. I hit on everything. I just did the most dirty shit possible all the time. And it felt fantastic. <laughs> so I respect I'm that. Sold. That's a great answer. I'm yeah. going to try this game now. Oh, you should. Listen, honestly, if you like Star Wars, so I'll, I'll give you a little, like, I'm going to shine a little, shine a little light on Star Wars. Star Wars The Old Republic still is the most voice acted game ever created. Yep. So wow. every single NPC, every single character is all voice acted and all of them have a decision tree that comes with it. Yeah. Hmm. And you can play all eight class stories for free all the way up to through the second expansion for free completely. Don't need to pay a cent for anything. Hey, and you know what? You, and if you pay, I'll send I'll send you a bunch of credits to start. I think I'm I think I'm gonna play that game. Oh yeah, shit. right. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, cheers to that. Okay. Right after you finish Fallen Order. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get quizzed. So yeah. I gotta keep that. Oh up. no, you definitely have to play Fallen Order, but yeah. I will. I will. That's that's mandatory. Game. Uh Marcus, did you want to elaborate on your answer from earlier? I think I just said it. R2D2 is my favorite. Mm-hmm. It's because he helps everybody. Never need, he doesn't need the force. He doesn't need anything. He's just there to help. He doesn't even need words. He just beeps and boops and he does his job. Like, and he's just your friend and he just wants to help. That's the goals. Yeah. Same thing with me. Like, I just want to help everybody succeed, grow, whatever you need. I'm here to help you achieve that. And then Ventress, I like Ventress because she's evil. But she's really good on the inside, and she's the perfect depiction of somebody that was really – she felt lost when she lost her master, and then they just corrupted her. But by the end, she was still evil, but she still did good. She did good. Yeah. With she showed that, like, yes, she had yeah. good in her heart. Kind yeah. of. Right. So mine's yeah. kind of far out there. Uh, I am – I was I thought really hard when you started asking people about this question. I'm like, okay, am I a light side person or a dark side person? And I'm like, I think if I, if the force 
if I actually was force sensitive, right? I'd be like, what would I do? And I'm like, I would definitely prefer the dark side of the force because I think it's more pragmatic. Um, if you're going to like, I like to help people. So I work in the medical field. So I, if I'm trying to heal somebody, of course, I'm going to let my emotions flow and use that power to my advantage. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If you're fighting somebody, it makes more sense to let the emotions flow and, and use that to your advantage. So like, to be have to be stoic all the time while in order to use your powers just didn't make a lot of sense to me. So like, okay, so dark side of the force makes sense. And if I'm picking a dark side force character, it's this is from Legends, but I don't know if you guys have read any of the Star Wars books, mm-hmm. but Darth Bane is the shit. So Darth mm-hmm. Bane is has a trilogy of books. Um, I didn't read them. I listened to them on Audible. I highly recommend doing that for any Star Wars book content because it's it's if you like podcasts listening mm-hmm. to a book on Audible. They, they're fully voice acted and have lots of sound effects too. Usually they're ripped right for the movie. So lightsaber clashes are, you're listening to it like it's a movie basically. But Darth Bane is the Sith that took the Sith from, you know, lots and thousands of Sith squabbling with each other uh, during the Sith Empire in the Old Republic to just the rule of two. So he said he killed every single other Sith through this creative cunning way that I don't want to spoil. Uh, if you go read the book and then he just said, I'm going to be the only Sith and I'm going to take her an apprentice and I'm going to pass down my knowledge until they're ready to kill me. And then they're going to take an apprentice. So if I'll, I'll spoil a little bit of the books, this is my favorite part of the character. It's really vague by the end of the trilogy as to whether or not he force essence transfers himself into his apprentice or not. And then in my only, the only part I really liked about the sequel trilogy, Palpatine goes, I am the Sith. So in theory, you could say that Darth Bane uh, Force Essence transferred himself through every single Sith Lord since then. And he is every Sith person that you see in all of Star Wars, essentially, after the Old Republic. Now, see, I knew that sounded familiar, and I looked it up real quick, um, because he was in... uh, He was in Clone Wars. uh, Well, not the Clone Wars, but um, the video game um, uh, with Darth Revan. Knights of the Old Republic. Knights of the Darth Old Republic. Bane was? No, that's Darth Malak. That's Darth oh, Malak. Well, I thought. Yeah. I mean, I remember Darth Bane was mentioned. There was he? He was in the Clone Wars cartoon. He was. He, he was, was in a Sith mm-hmm. tomb. He. I think it was just a holocron of him or something oh, like yeah. that. But yes, he was mentioned in in a, in a um in a tomb. But also, Darth Bane is the unnamed Sith in the base holocrons, uh, Sith holocrons at um, Galaxy's Edge. When you say like I am all the Sith, that's Darth Bane technically hmm. talking, hmm. which is interesting. I you know it goes through the story if you have if you get a holocron from Galaxy's Edge and the Sith one, and it's you don't put a, a crystal in there. It's Darth Bane talking and saying like I created the rule of two, and he goes through the whole spiel. It's pretty cool, but so that's my favorite character. That's the answer I always say. But as I was I was thinking about it this episode as we're talking about Mandalorian stuff, and I really like Din Djarin too. That Mandalorian character is wicked cool. I think I, I like it particularly a lot. I mean, all, most people do, but I really like Westerns also. Mm-hmm. Um, like that, like the man with no name character in the um, spaghetti, in uh, Cl- Clint Eastwood's character in um, like A Fistful of Dollars and then Good, Bad, and the Ugly. That trilogy of movies mm-hmm. is really cool just to have like that sort of not silent, but like minimally speaking protagonist, you know, is really interesting. So I think Din Djarin is probably my like honorable mention, but Darth Bane's my favorite character for sure. Nice. So, what are you guys uh, the most excited about in the Witch Queen? Gator expansion. Well, this is a simple one for me. It's weapon crafting. I mean, that's the one thing they're bringing. They they haven't told us much yet, but stay tuned to those twabs because they're going to reveal something. See that these next three twabs are probably going to be the most important twabs to listen to or or read. Yeah, because this is where they're going to really spill. And they've they've already told you, hey, spoiler warning, you might know what's coming up. But I I make a crazy prediction on our show every major content release for Destiny. And my prediction is that they're finally going to fix our collections tab. I think, I know, Hazel doesn't, I, it's a stretch. I'll admit myself, it's a stretch. You go to the collections tab now, what good is it? In order to just pull guns that have been sunset? that you can't power up past 1100 that have fixed roles. Well, everything has multiple roles now. 
And especially the newer weapons, you could have like one in 3,000 chance of getting the right setup you want. I think what they're going to do is as you scroll over your gun and weapon collections, it's going to have a toggle that switches down. And every gun drop that you've gotten, you'll unlock that perk. You'll be able to build your gun. Boom. It's in your hands. If you've unlocked it enough that it does eliminate farming, you can still farm weapons. But they they haven't said a whole lot about weapon crafting. So that's that's the number one thing. I'm My ears are perked up, ready to listen, see what they're going to say. What do you think, Hazel? He, he says this, but yet he won't make a bet with me. We made a bet. What's our bet? What's our bet this 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 season? But that's 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 not this man. Come on, that's a, no way. I'm, ta- I'm not taking that bet. I know that bet's a stretch. There's no way. I know the odds well, are against me. Yeah. Okay, Hazel. What are you looking forward to most in Witch Queen? My thing is the raid, the new raid. Are wanna... you day one? Yeah, I will. Mm-hmm. I'll be in there day one. Me too. Especially after doing GMs, because GMs are like a gateway to that. So that way you can, you know, cause you're used to hiding behind cover for everything, you know, it's like, oh my God, there's a thrall. It's going to kill me and hiding. I understand that. I'm just excited for the game itself. My first expansion with the game. And what I'm going to be curious of is the rumor is the campaign is they're They're comparing this campaign to like a God of war length like if that's the case that means this campaign is going to be 30 hours <laughs> bring it <laughs> like no no i'm welcoming that and we're going to do week one the first week of rating yeah because like i don't have the experience for a day one like as much as i want to do it i don't think i'm going to be able to just because i don't want to be the weakest link you know what i mean and I feel like there's nothing wrong with me doing week one rating. Yeah, it's not going to have contest mode. We're not going to clear it anyways, whatever team I'm on. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, though, is that day one rating isn't, to me, it's not about getting the clear. Because we did Vogue. It was a group of us. And we didn't even make it out of the first area. See, that would just irritate me. It, it was irritating for sure. But you know what I mean? Especially because you probably did Vogue in D1. Oh, yeah. And you're like, I know this fucking raid. Why aren't we winning? But for me, it's like I I do nightmare raiding in Swotor. That's the hardest raids in the game. Mm -hmm. And it is frustrating when you do something over and over and over and over and you don't succeed. Like I was saying to the my friends who we were talking about doing day one. And I was like, if we beat the first boss, that's a win. Yes. Like, yeah. But at the same time, like, I'm not going to want to be up for 12 hours and not yeah. clear the first area. Not a chance. I would much rather wait for week one. Let the day one Raiders clear the raid. At least there's a little bit of a strat or we go in blind. Who cares? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you do it at normal level. And who cares? People are like, oh, it's a meme. It's still going to be hard as fuck for me. Yeah, but I yeah. love that's the thing, though, is I love doing day one raids because you get to figure stuff out for the first time. Right. That's the it's thing. A, it's, it's a it's one time discovery. only thing unless you put your head in the sand until the next day when it's Christmas morning mode is off. No, I I agree, because yeah. when the new raid comes out in SWOTOR, I'm there day one. Yep. And, you know, learning how figuring out what. Yeah. Oh, what does this red telegraph do? Oh, we're all dead. Oops. <laughs> Well, Whatever you do, don't interrupt the droid. I know you want to interrupt it, but you cannot because it's going to kill all of us. You right. know what I mean? Um, tell everybody where they can find you guys. Well, uh, we are on Twitter, at guardian underscore down underscore cast. Uh, you can find us. Uh, we have uh, I have a YouTube channel, Gator Dash Guardian Down Cast, where we post our episodes. If you like to listen to it on uh, YouTube. Uh, get, uh guardiandowncast.com. I mean, we have a page there has all of our details. We have an Instagram that Hazel runs where our guests will actually post pictures and we'll put it in our Instagram. So people even know more about them. Uh, and, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm Gator G A T R all caps. Don't forget those underscores. Uh, you can find me on PS five and steam and, uh, Hazel, where else can people find us? Um, well, they can find me at Hazel NT, pretty 
pretty much at all the places and um, on Twitch at the Hazel NT. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on the show, you guys. Yeah, you guys you rock. Thanks, yeah. guys. No, you guys rock. It was great this to was actually fun. like whoa, whoa. hear most of this that you were saying and like live instead of like yes. just re- on the recording. Wait, yeah. I got a question before we go. I got a question. Yeah. All right. Sure. What's up? All right. You know, Savathun's in the cocoon, right? Yep. She's all encased in that little butterfly cocoon. Mm hmm. When she comes out of that cocoon, who's going to die? That's me and Hazel's bet. Who do you think is going to die, if anybody? Um, um, Osiris. <laughs> that was my guess. <laughs> I like this guy already. Wrong. No, Wrong. no. So hear me out. It's either yeah. it's either Crow or Osiris, one or the other. Okay. What did you say, uh, Hazel? Oh, no, wait a minute. I want to hear what Nick has to say. Oh, Nick. Nick's, Nick's never lost. Mind. Nick's like, I got uh, you. Yeah. Yeah. Nick's like, who? Uh, who did you I'll say? Go, I'll go with Crow just to be the contrary okay man. okay <laughs> no hazel thinks no. mara's gonna mara die. yeah mara saw it. so uh one thing i did want to say real quick about your discord sure is, okay is that i've been in your discord for probably maybe like a week now okay and i judge discords based on their memes um you guys have some top-notch memes <laughs> let's go <laughs> nerds community is crushing it <laughs> Well, my favorite channel is the database. It's yes. where we store all the dad jokes dad and it is dad dub base. And it's awesome. That is when we created the nerds community, I was like, we have to have a dad joke channel and it has to be called the database. And by far that has taken us over the top, but like, <laughs> it's crazy. Like I'll go to bed or I'll go to work and I won't be able to check discord. You come back and like all the channels are lit up with new shit yeah. and it's just hilarious. Yeah. And the people are so awesome and wholesome. Like my favorite part of our discord is like, even if I don't get to welcome the, the new people in, which I always do, mm-hmm. somebody from the community mm-hmm. always welcomes the new people. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a great feeling. It, it is. What are you guys talking about in here? Find out next episode of working, working class nerds. nerds.